Hello everybody. Welcome back to Basics with Babish Live. Uh, sorry I didn't do a little intro like I've normally done. I realized that that was lame. So we're just going to go full steam ahead here. I'm just going to shut this down so I can see what you guys are saying. What's up folks? Oh, we got 5,000 people here. Welcome everybody to any newcomers. This is Basics with Babish Live where uh, every other week I make live what we made last week on Basics with Babish. Um, so <clears throat> if you want to cook along, you can, if you can't, the live streams are always saved on YouTube and you can join in anytime and cook right along with me on the internet, which is the way that it was meant to be. Thank you guys so much for joining us. What's up everybody. I also want to point you towards the join button next to, uh, next to, uh, subscribe below the video window there. That is to join as a channel member where you can get access to behind the scenes footage outtakes, uh, early access to episodes, um, bonus episodes, all different kinds of good stuff, sneak peeks at upcoming episodes. For instance, so far since starting channel, channel memberships two weeks ago, we've posted one exclusive episode. Um, sorry? Emojis and tags, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Sawyer, Sawyer in the other room, uh, who I'll introduce you to in a moment, just reminded me that uh, uh, Another thing that you get access to as a channel member are special emojis and tags. Uh, tags commemorating how long you've been a member and special emojis uh, of my face doing specific emotions. Um, and so far on the, for channel memberships, we've posted a, an exclusive episode, some behind the scenes stuff, uh, two early episodes, and it's only been two weeks. So lots of good stuff coming your way, plus the whole cache of exclusive content that's been made for Patreon over the past two years that you will have access to as I post it. So please do join if, uh, if, if you'd like. I see we have some new members already. Thank you guys so much. I see we have a super chat here. Uh, tu Tunified gave 55, whatever those are. Thank you. you, know, you I, I was hoping that I could do a little bit of Arthur Morgan tonight. <clears throat> here we go. You're all right, girl. You're all right, boy. That's my boy. Anyway, over in the other room, we got the rise to my Fraser, and that's Sawyer Jacobs. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop doing that. Um, we've got uh, Sawyer in the other room. Anybody who's, who has joined the live streams in the past is going to know Sawyer. He is joined by our friend Ari. Fellas, why don't you say hello? Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks so much uh, for all the new memberships already. Very cool to see. As uh, Andrew said, we got Ari in the studio tonight. Quick, say a quick hello, Ari. Hello, everybody. There he is, live and in the flesh, another thick boy to uh, have a donut or two. New thick boy in the house. Uh, we got two uh, super chats here. Son of a pizza man, I remember you. $10, thank you so much, Andrew. Son uh, of a pizza man. Son of a pizza man, you son of a pizza man. Um, can I please get another shout out for my YouTube channel and make all kinds of homemade pizza and you should come, up, come to Chicago. I was just in Chicago and here's a shout out to your, to your YouTube channel, Son of a Pizza Man. Guys, go check it out. Thank you so much for your super chat, bro. Uh, Andrew Mantha, fellow Andrew, what's up, dude? Five Canadian dollars, so 30 US cents. I'm kidding. Um, shut up and take my Google survey money. Uh, thank you, I will. And I'm just kidding about that. that that's, an, that's a really dated joke. That's like a 90s joke. I'm pretty sure the Canadian dollar is stronger than the U.S. dollar nowadays. Um, let's see. What's up, folks? Thank you very much for coming and hanging out. You're from Chicago. Chicago's a good town. I was just there doing something for the Chicago Food and Wine Festival. Or what was it? It was the Bon Appetit Food and Wine Festival. And uh, did a little presentation there. It was fun. I got to hang out by the bean, the big metal nasty bean that you guys have there. It's awesome. Um, I don't know what it's called, the infinity bean. Uh, I don't know what it is, but um, I'm, sure some, I'm sure a million people are about to tell me. Palestine loves me. Thank you. Um, so j j hey, you got a couple of hellos, Sawyer and Ari in here. How tall is he? I'm five foot nine. Okay? It's fine. It's totally average height. It's perfectly normal. Uh, we have a new super chat, Abby Ford, two pounds, two English pounds. Beautiful. Thank you. We got a new member. We have a new super chat, Lindsay Gillis, 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you so much. Love your channel. You inspired me to cook and love food. Shout out from Canada. Can you dab for us? Uh, so th thank you. First of all, that's really nice. I love hearing that. Um, I love that, that, that you're inspired to cook. Anybody who's tr considering cooking for the first time, 
give it a shot. Check out some of the earlier videos. There's some really fun, easy techni techniques there. Lindsay, I'm so happy that you were able to do that. And uh, can I dab for you? Not in the traditional sense, but if you send me some concentrates, maybe I'll do dabs for you. Nick Gurr is $5. Babis, ba Daddy Babby Notice Me Senpai. Hi, Nick. Then we have a 50 pound super chat from British Cook. Wow, that is extremely generous. Thank you so much. Um, British Cook, I could not bear to miss this. <laughs> Don't not want to miss this. That's two, that's two puns from this week in one sentence, and I appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much. You rock, British Cook. Thank you so much for the very generous super chat. JC Productions, thank you for your super chat. Just want to say hi. You keep me hungry. Good. Love making people hungry. A five pound super chat from To The Points. This is just what I need for my Friday morning at work. How are you from Australia? Oh, it's morning there. Weird. It's nighttime here. That's strange. Um, <clears throat> I'm good, man. How are you? How are things in Australia? I love. I, I was about to say I love Australia. I've never been there. Dying to go there. Would love to. Would love to one day. Kamikaze Kirk. Uh, hello from Brisbane, Australia. I'm learning a lot watching you. Thanks. That's so nice to hear. Kamikaze Kirk. Uh, very and thank you for the for the gen, for the super chat donation. Thank you guys for new members. Thank you for joining. And uh, for anybody who's just jumping in, memberships are a new feature. Guys, I can hear you in there. <laughs> um, Memberships are a new feature. There's a mute button on the mic if you want. There's a red button that if you hit it, you can mute it. Um, oh, but it, no, it's your headphones, isn't it? Oh, no, but it's your, it's, but it's your, it's your headphones. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Uh, uh. Um, but, or you can just mute your headphones if you just hit mute on your phone. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, technical issues, folks. Uh, uh, so... Oh, today we're making donuts. We're making two different kinds of donuts. This is a large challenge. Oh, we have some very generous super chats here. WKB Karma, five, $5. Thank you thank you for all you do. You rock. That's so kind. Thank you so much, dude. AJ Halime, Halim, love your vids. 20 pound donation. That is very, very kind. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys for the super chats. Thank you for memberships. You make the channel possible. I cannot thank you enough for your generous contributions to the show. Nicholas Wolf asks, when will you do a Skyrim episode? Soon. So many people are asking for boiled cream treats and um, what else was there? Uh, that's like the most famous one, right? Boiled cream treats. I can't remember the other ones from Skyrim. Um, and we got uh, Nicholas Wolf. So, so very soon, I, I promise. $15 from Dave the Taco Guy Gaming. My children, Samaj and Janya, love you. That's so nice. Please say hello to them. I'm glad that they like the show. 10 euros from Christ of, wait, Christ of Oredith. Or okay, I don't know what that means. But 10 euros, thank you so much. Greetings from Greece, keep up the good job. Uh, thank you, that's very kind. Hello from America, hello from New York City. That's where we are at, for anybody who's unaware. And um, thank you guys so much for the very generous super chats. I'm going to get cooking though, so I'm not going to be able to read these for too long. But Sawyer will be taking notes on who's saying what, and when we have breaks, I'll be able to answer any and all questions pressing pertinent issues. Remington M, $5, thank you so much. I would love to cook along, but not sure your recipe would work at 9,800 feet. Things don't seem to work as easily up here, LOL. That is true. Cooking at different altitudes is very challenging. I'm not sure if this would be that big of an issue because we're just deep frying, and I think uh, altitude cooking has to do more with water, right? Uh, like uh, the boiling point of water changes or something? Um, I'm being very uninformed right now, so please nobody pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> All right, guys, so why don't we start making some donuts, huh? Is there anything else we should touch on, Jake, before we, uh, before we start moving here? No, I think you got it. Ask uh, any questions you may have with, uh, you know, cooking questions and let us know what your favorite Wegmans are. You know, n normal live stream stuff. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was just about to ask, is there, are there any Rochesterians in the house that have uh, made themselves known? Because uh, that's, that's, we, we, we appreciate you. I mean, we appreciate all of you, but we also appreciate Rochester. Um, what is the, let's see, we got, oh, we got a whole bunch of super chats since I just said, I can't read them. Um, Anthony Marlatte, 499, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do. Love learning new things to cook from you. How about some Godfather spaghetti to go with those cannolis? Love you. Love you too, Anthony. And I love your name. We're, we were just binge watching Sopranos just now. So I just keep thinking of uh, Tony saying, hey, today, it's a, it's a retirement community. Um, we got Kitura Morocco. Five Canadian dollars, thank you so much. What is the recommended alcoholic beverage to drink while making donuts? Love from Canada. I mean, I would say whiskey goes with pretty much any donut making occasion. I am fresh out of whiskey, which has gotta be a first. <clears throat> so right now, 
just wanted to loosen up a little bit for the stream. I just have a little bit of, um, this is a gin lemonade here that I make with uh, pineapple seltzer and gin and a little squeeze of lemon. It's a really lovely, refreshing little drink, especially because it's about to get super hot in here and I should have the AC on. I'll turn that on uh, once it gets warm in here. Mm. So that's what I recommend. Guglielmo, five euros. Hello from Italy. Thank, keep up the great job. Thank you so much, Guglielmo. Nicholas Wolf. I, was, I just said it again. He said my name. I can die happy now. I just said it again. Thank you, Nicholas. It's very, very kind. And uh, please don't die on me. Amethyst Mendek, five dollars. Would love a Downton Abbey and Steven Universe Foods episode. I am a Patreon as patron as well. Hola, Dallas, Texas. Hey, Dallas. I've been there a lot. That's that's a good town you have there. And thank you for the. The contribution, and I will be doing a Steven Universe episode. The uh, ke the fries with the ketchup built into them, and the um, pizza bagel with the cream cheese in it. Uh, Time Master, 1989, ten dollars. Thank you so much. I love your channel. I've translated a lot of what I've learned from watching you to my job as a cook. That's really lovely to hear, especially considering I'm not a trained chef. So that's very, very high praise. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Poe Brown, 84. Five dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you for putting ketchup and mayo in your Philly cheesesteak represent. I have to be fully honest. I'm kind of opposed to ketchup and mayo on a Philly cheesesteak. I did it for accuracy's sake from the movie. But I will never judge you for what you put on your Philly cheesesteak. I just personally wouldn't do that myself. That's just me. Uh, but, you know, everybody's a beautiful, unique flower. Z Zaccone 2, $12.34. Very interesting dollar amount. Uh, I'm sure it has some kind of significance. Um, Thank you. Uh, and you used the, the, the special babish emojis. Thank you. Um, try not to burn the donuts. I'm going to try, but I did burn the first two batches when we were shooting this. $5 from Max Cohn. Hello from RIT. My go-to Wegmans is on Marketplace Drive. What's up, dude? My dad taught at RIT uh, his, most, of his, most of his adult career. He, uh, he taught photojournalism there. So double hello there. We have a very generous $20 donation from a guy you know across the street. Uh, he didn't say anything, but thank you so much for the very kind donation and the goofy username. Six dollars from Nematode. Love you, man. I love you too, Nematode. Um, and five. This is the last one I'm going to read before we start cooking. Five pounds from Ipiki Okami. If whiskey goes with everything, then it's the Gules theme of alcohol. I'm sure I know what that is, but it, it, it escapes me right now. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to stop reading and start cooking because 6,400 people are here to watch some donuts get made, not have me read text. But any super chats that you guys lay down, Sawyer will try to keep track of them as best he can, and we will be addressing them when we have breaks. I have to knead this dough for eight minutes, so that's eight minutes where I'm just going to be able to just answer any question in the world. So let's get that dough going first. That's what we're going to do. I'm just going to pull up my recipe here. Jake, am I missing anything? I'm going to get started here. No, I think we're ready to go. I'm, uh, I'm excited for these donuts. What kind of donuts are you going to make today? Well, we're making two different kinds of donuts, uh, hopefully, if I have the energy. Um, we're making the traditional yeasted donuts, dusted with sugar and stuffed with, uh, uh, filled with, with raspberry jelly. And then we're making sour cream donuts, which are my favorite kind of donuts. They're full of all these craggles and cracks, and they, they just get really moist and dense. But on the outside, they're super crispy and crunchy. They're, just, they're the best kind of donut, if you ask me. Um, for my money, and uh, that you know, that's 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 what I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna be moving over to uh, camera two. Just a little heads up for you there, Jake. Um, in just a moment. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cup of whole milk here, and we are going to apply it to a saucepan. Okay, simple as that. Once we have applied it to the saucepan, we're going over to camera two. And we're going to very briefly apply heat to this because we just want to bring her up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're just going to get that just warmed up. I've got my thermopen here so we can keep an eye on things. It's just going to take like 30 seconds. So in the meantime, I'm going to prepare the bowl into which it shall be deposited. Over here, we are adding two this bowl, about two and a half teaspoons, two and a quarter teaspoons, I believe, is what is in a, t a standard yeast packet, but I have this nice jar of yeast here, so I'm going to go ahead and drop two, and is it two and a quarter or two and three quarter? 
we go two and a half just to be safe. I don't think it's going to be a huge problem if we over or under yeast because yeast can be very active or very inactive. So, uh, you know, it's not going to make that big a deal. Baking is a very precise art, but we are deep frying here, so I'm going to pretend like it's not. Um, to this, we're also going to add a little pinch of sugar that's just going to help. Here's my sugar. It's just going to help the yeast. Uh, it's going to give the yeast a little bit of food and help them uh, get, get nice and excited. Uh, so just a little, little pinch of sugar in there. Yeast feeds on sugar, so we need to give it a nice environment in which it will thrive. Okay, we're back over at camera two. I'm going to test the... Oh, we're well over. Went way over. I knew that was going to happen. All right, well, no biggie. I'm just going to go ahead and pour this into another vessel, preferably a glass one, because glass is an excellent disseminator of heat. So I'm just going to pour it in here. And let it cool right off because it's way too warm and at its current temperature it would kill the yeast. So let's see what people are talking about here. Everybody can hear me okay? Things look good? Things sound good? All right. Good. So here we go. I'm just going to clear this off here. We got a little bit of extra sugar. The perils of cooking live, folks. This is the nature of a live cooking show. There's going to be a mess and it has to be cleaned up. What do we got here? Oh yeah, we're well over here. So what I'm probably gonna do is just for the sake of expediency, because we don't have all day here, is I'm going to add more milk to this <clears throat> to cool it off and bring it to our desired temperature. So let's throw this in here. We're about 20 degrees over. So if I add it, say that much. Oh, oh, look at that. Nailed it, 110, wow. I just impressed myself. It doesn't happen often to me. So now, of this milk that is a perfect 110 degrees, that was totally unintentional, it was pure luck, I'm going to add one cup of it to the yeast and sugar mixture. And then, I'm going to reserve the milk over here for future applications, because I'm sure we'll need it for something. And then what I'm going to do is apply a fan favorite that I don't think I've ever used in a live stream before. Anybody recognize this little guy? We got ourselves a tiny whisk. And we're just going to whisk that until the yeast is dissolved. Sawyer, let me know if the comments blow up when they see tiny whisk. Tiny whisk is a fan favorite for anybody who's new around here. People seem to have gravitated towards the little guy. All right. So that's been whisked together. We're going to let this bloom for about 10 minutes while it's blooming. We're going to combine our remaining dry ingredients. Put the milk away here. There we go. Oh, how are we doing, folks? What am I missing over here, right? I see a 50 pound donation. Thank you so much, British. Oh, oh, that's the one from before. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you again, because it was very, very generous. Uh, guy you know across the street, I still see yours. You didn't ask a question, but thank you so much for your generosity. I really appreciate it. We got a question in here that uh, I think you're going to want to answer. Let's hear it. Uh, the latest super chat. Thanks so much, Jack Milbauer. Pretty cool, authoritative name. Uh, how far are you in <laughs> yeah. Red Dead? Also, uh, your show has been great since the beginning. Really appreciate it, Jack. That's very, very, very kind. You said Zach or, J or Jack? That's Jack Milbauer. Jack Milbauer. You're right. Sounds like, a, like he's an FBI agent or something. Um, Special Agent Agent Milbauer. Uh, Jack, I am approximately 35%. We can verify this. I got boys in the other room that can verify, but I think I'm about 30% through the campaign, through the through the story, uh, through the story. And um, I've just been dicking around in the in the in the hillsides and hunting and robbing and and doing the cowboy thing. Um, so. I'm taking my time with it. I take my time with, with video games like this because I don't want them to end. But I have a weird thing where I'll play them almost to the end and then I'll be like, oh, I don't want it to be over. I'll just stop playing it for a little while. And then I just don't finish the game. Like, I still haven't finished uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild because I, I thought, oh, I don't, I don't want this to be over. I'll, I'll, I'll finish it another time. And then I just stop playing it, which is ridiculous. I should just finish it. All right, so just, just so you know what I'm doing here, I'm measuring out 350 grams of all-purpose flour. Oops, too much. Way too much. Let's scoop some of that back in here. 
grab this scoop. I need 350 on the news. I've been trying to do a better job of measuring in metric because it's obviously so much more accurate. There we go. Three, 352. It's close enough for me. Yeah, because if I turn this into ounces, it's 12 and 3 eighths ounces, which could go crazy different depending on how, how precise we're being. So we got our 350 grams of flour, and then we need 75 grams of white sugar. So while we're over here on the scale, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to rinse this off. Actually, no, I'm going to use a different one because the, our friends with gluten intolerances might, uh, you know, I might, if I just dunk this in the sugar, then I make something later on for somebody with a gluten intolerance, that could mess them up. I've, I've, I've seen it happen. I have, happily haven't, haven't done it to anybody, but uh, I've seen it happen. So try and keep your tools separate. You never know who's coming around for dinner. So now we need 75 grams of sugar. I'm going to start dumping that in there. So I'm pushing this up to 425 is our target number. Here we go. 400, 410, 421, 420. What does that mean? I don't know. 420. Ooh, just overdid it. Okay, let me dump the rest of that back and we'll just whoop. 428. Got to be precise. 425. Perfect. All right. So now, and you'll notice that I didn't dump the sugar back in there because it was exposed to the dangerous gluten, which, which I have a lot of friends who have celiac disease. C gluten intolerance is a real thing. It's not the just the fad that it has been made out that, that, that a lot of people have enjoyed. It's, 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 a, it's a real problem for some people. So exercise caution. If you use something with flour, don't just throw it back in the, don't just throw it back in the drawer. You gotta, you gotta you know, be, be considerate. And a teaspoon of table salt. And the reason that we went back to um, by uh, uh, volume instead of weight is because with something as small as a teaspoon of salt, your scale, like my scale, is a junker. My scale is, 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 is crap. So it, w it probably wouldn't even register a teaspoon of salt if I were to try and measure it. It probably, w it probably wouldn't even see it. It would say, like, you know, I'd have to keep adding, and then all of a sudden, oh, you added five grams, and oh, surprise, wow. So teaspoon of salt in there. With salt, especially table salt, it's pretty hard to go wrong. Like, if you, a teaspoon that I measure out is going to be virtually the same as the teaspoon you measure, measure out, as opposed to flour, which if I measure out a cup of flour, it could be up to, I think it was something like 30% different than if you measure a cup of flour because of how, how compacted it can, it can get. Um, and now we just need to prep three large egg yolks. Let me just look at the directions here. Um, in the same bowl, add three large egg yolks. And da, 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 da. Okay. So, now I'm going to get a nice big bowl, which I have right here. I already prepped it, but I, I sometimes I'm not, I'm not even prepared for my own preparedness. And I'm going to grab some eggs. These are eggs left over from my camping trip because I shot that Red Dead Redemption episode this past weekend. I shot it on Saturday out in the wilds of upstate New York, Mont Mont Monticello to be precise. And... Um, and I uh, didn't end up making breakfast there because I, I didn't sleep a wink all night. It was really horrible. I'll tell you guys the story during my downtime here. I'll tell you guys the story while I'm kneading. I can't tell the story while, properly while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm working here. So once I'm kneading, I'll, I'll give you the breakdown of what, just exactly what happened. Um, but it, it, is, it is by the grace of whatever alone, it is pure luck that that episode actually worked out. Um, anyway, long story, we'll get there. So what I'm doing here is I am separating three large egg yolks because only the yolks are going into this dough. There, I think there's going to be five egg yolks in the uh, sour cream donuts, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. I have to check my recipe. Uh, so I'm just separating these guys out here. Hit me. Okay, so... We've got a bit of a situation here. What's that? One of one of the viewers is going into labor. Oh, what? No, really? Um, yeah, Courtney Haddon. Good luck. Godspeed. Courtney, 
Courtney, good luck. And uh, yeah, wow, that's very exciting. And um, yeah, get to She's the hospital. She's been eating your pasta yeah. dishes to, to cope with uh, the impending. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you pregnancy. didn't make them too spicy or something. I hope it's not my fault for that reason. <laughs> Um, but that's, uh, that's amazing. Courtney, congratulations. Get, get, go, go, you, you, you can do it. I have confidence in you. It sounds hard though. I wouldn't want to do it myself personally, but I'm very proud of you for doing it. Um, but that sounds really super hard, but again, good job. Um, okay. So now what are we doing here? Um, we've got our egg yolks and we're just going to do some stuff here. Okay, it sounds like we're just mixing everything together. It's been a while since I've made this, so I'm reading my own recipe like a dunce. Um, let me grab a whisk, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna give my dry ingredients a little whisk together to make sure that everybody's gotten to know each other. Everything's nice and incorporated. Are we sifting this? Am I sifting this? No, 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 no need to sift with this. It's true, we don't need to sift this because uh, we're going to be kneading it for God knows how long, so it doesn't matter how lumpy it gets, it's all going to get very evenly incorporated. I'll just give this a little whisk just to make sure there's no whole egg yolk or white kicking around. And I do remember that I'm doing this backwards now. I remember that I was supposed to dump the eggs into the flour, but whatever. You, you, you win some, you lose some. Um, I'm going to grab a wooden spoon here. Because that's what we're going to use to stir this a bit with. And this is probably not ideal here. Uh, I need something round. Oh, you know what? Forget wooden spoons. I'll use a rubber spatula. That's the way. That's the way that... That's uh, the ghost of uh, whoever invented donuts would want me to do this. What? So, adding the dry ingredients. And then over here, as you can see, our yeast has bloomed nicely. I got this nice foamy layer. On the top, that's a good sign. That means our yeast is alive and well. We're just going to dump all that in there. And hope that it all works out. Okay. And just to avoid any confusion, these are not gluten-free donuts. I'm just trying to take in con into consideration uh, any gluten intolerances that future diners in my home might have. And that I don't want to cross-contaminate anything. I try to keep glutinous and non-glutinous uh, raw ingredients like the sugar in that sugar bag separate uh, just to make sure that uh, there are no problems down the line. Anyway, I'm sure that nobody was laboring under the delusion that these are gluten-free donuts because they're obviously not. So we're just mixing this up until a rough dough forms. It's looking a little sticky, but I'm going to have faith. It looks really sticky actually, but I do this right. A couple whole milk. Sugar, yeast, flour, sugar, uh, salt, yolks. Okay, yeah. I didn't miss anything, but it looks real sticky. So what we're going to do is compensate for that with some flour. It's really sticky. Wow. Um, I would use the stand mixer, but then it would just be 10 minutes of mixer noise and me not talking, which we just can't have. So, and we have to use it later for our sour cream donuts, but only briefly, so. Uh, this should be a kneadable dough, though, so I guess what we're going to have to do is just really try and compensate here as best as possible. Let's start by very, very liberally dusting our, our work surface with flour here. Very liberally. Um, huh. I wonder if I missed a step. This, this looks so sticky. Very odd. Let's see what happens. I'm going to flour up my hands pretty good here. And let's try and make this into something workable. It's going to get sticky as I, as I work it here, which means that I just need to move it around, get more flour into it. If any of this stuff sticks, scrape it up. We don't want it sticking to the work surface, so... Let's keep, uh, let's keep dusting here. Ooh, losing some pieces. That's the beauty of cooking lives, that things can go wrong, and you guys can see how I might compensate for something like this if I were just making it in the privacy of my home, not in a cooking show. Um, I do think I probably did something wrong. This feels incredibly soft, and it just seems like... I remember it being so much more um, solid and tacky. I must have under-measured the 
flour or something? Hmm. Well, we'll just keep working in more flour until it becomes a, a workable dough. That's really the only option we got right now. So this is how you try and you know, improvise when it comes to uh, hopefully not baked goods usually, but um, cooking generally. <laughs> You need to be able to improvise. So, Jake, unless the, uh, let me know if there are any uh, pertinent qu uh, pressing questions, but uh, otherwise I'll just tell my camping story. Well, nothing as pressing as a pregnancy. We, yeah, uh, big. we got a nice super chat from Carrie Ann hoping that they named the baby Babish. I, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very odd because you'd be naming your baby really after a Aaron Sorkin character. But um, th I would be very honored by the, by the intention. But also, that kid would probably get made fun of a little bit. Babish sounds like a made-up name. Um, but by all means, please do name your, your child Babish. I will attend the bris or the christening or whatever, I don't know, whatever childhood ceremony you're, you associate with. Um, I will not attend the bris, actually. I take that back. Um, that freaks me out. But... Any other uh, super chats? Any other big, big questions or thoughts? Uh, Ross with a super chat invited us to Glasgow. Uh, come on oh. the Glasgow Celtic. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. We've been to Glasgow briefly. Uh, I, I would um, assume the Glasgow Celtic is is a I don't know like a, a river cruise. They do those amazing river cruises out there. And is there a river in Glasgow? I'm about to embarrass myself with my lack of geography. It does Knowledge. sound like a river cruise, though. That's true. It does. Yeah. It sounds like a boat. Um, Gabrielle would love to see you cook while dancing to Salt and Peppa's Push It. That's a nice idea. I'm into it. I'm down. And then we got Freelo asking you to do a uh, sandwich from Team Fortress 2 or uh, <laughs> Delicose Bars or Fish Cake. I don't know if there's enough there, you know, who knows what that actually looks like in the game, but we'll check it out. I, I've, I, I've definitely checked out the sandwich in Team Fortress 2, but it is just a sandwich. It does look recreatable. It looks like a normal sandwich, but I'm not sure if the, like Sawyer said, I'm not sure if there's enough there. It's because um, it is just a sandwich. It's, I don't recall it ever being, you know, intimately described or explained or anything like that. I'm going to try doing a little slap and fold here. That's a classic way of kneading very sticky doughs is to just sort of slap it down and fold it over, slap it down, fold it over. It's not that sticky though. I can just knead it. I can, just, I can chill with that. Um, I can feel the, the uh, gluten starting to form here and it's becoming a little bit more workable, but it's still very sticky. I must have, I must have missed something, but I, don't, I'm, I keep looking at the recipe unless the, the team that, that transcribed the recipe got it wrong. I don't know what I could have missed, but um, I should have watched the video. I should have watched my own video before you know doing this, because uh, sometimes the techniques blur together a little bit. But um, anyway, I might as well tell you guys. Unless there's anything else big, I might as well tell you guys my camping story. Um, so I drive a very not off-roady car. I drive. Uh, you've, you, you've probably seen it in, in one of my videos or in, uh, in the uh, uh, Peter Griffin car panini episode, but I drive an Audi A4, which uh, has very low profile tires and very low ground clearance. And um, it is not designed for off-roading. And so I used this service called Tenter, T-E-N-T-R-R, -R, which is kind of like Airbnb for tents almost, basically these like prefab um, canvas tents are set up in the woods. And I live in New York City, so I don't have camping gear handy. So I thought this would be perfect. I can go out there. It's not like too, it's not like glamping. It's still, you know, camping, but uh, it's, it's still, it's nice. There's a little wood burning stove in there and there's, uh, there's the, you, you bring a sleeping bag and you can put it on an air mattress or on a cot or whatever. And um, it seemed like it'd be a good, pretty good comfortable little option. Uh, and, and, and there's always fire pits and some, you know, a little, a little table out there. So I was like, perfect. I can use the table, which is what you see in the episode as a prep surface. And I get out there. It's about two hours north of New York City. I spend about six hours packing because I'm packing a costume, my normal clothes and camping gear, the little that I have, um, 
uh, 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 my full everything I might possibly need for the kitchen because I'm stuck out there and if I don't have something then I'm screwed um, and all the camera gear so very very stressful packing time I think we're at about six minutes here and this is still a little sticky which has me a little nervous but I think after we let it rise it's got to rise for about 90 minutes uh, 90 minutes to two hours if I remember correctly it only says 45 minutes. I don't trust this recipe at all. I need to, I need to go back and watch the video. I'm not going to do it with you, with you guys watching them. It would be boring. But anyway, so I, um, I'm heading out to the woods, and I get there, and it's this, you can't really call it a driveway so much as a, a mud path. And there are tire tracks half a foot deep, and there are these puddles just like, I think I measured one. It was about a. I used a stick to try and measure how deep it was before I drove through it. It was almost a foot deep, and my car, you know, God bless my my little car, uh, made it through all the these puddles and these huge mud tracks, and it almost got stuck ten times. And finally, make it through, and I see the tent in the distance. I'm like, yes, I'm getting close. And then the road just disappears, and I get out of the car, and it's there's there's a decline like this. It's just like. It's like a 45 degree decline. I'm like, there's no way my car is making it down that. I almost considered going down it. Thank God I didn't because that car would just be part of the woods now if I had. It would just be, it would be one with the woods. It would no longer be my car. It belonged to nature. And uh, so I'm like, wow, I'm screwed. <laughs> I can't get down to the tent. I can't go back to New York. I, I mean, I can, but you know, then this will just be all, a whole waste. So I started carrying everything by hand, um, all, you know, probably like six bags worth of stuff down to the tent uh, through the mud in my not appropriate attire. And, um, and uh, just, you know, as it's starting to get dark, first off, I get into the tent and it's filled with spiders, the biggest spiders I've ever seen. Some spiders by yay big around, those big, big, dark brown ones. And, and I found one in the toilet seat. Like I lifted, there's a little, like, like a little, little, um, portable toilet kind of thing in there. I lifted up the, uh, the lid and, and there's a freaking gigantic spider waiting for me underneath. And I was like, wow, fuck this. Sorry, excuse my language, but, uh, ugh. so I'm, I'm not happy. And, um, I, uh, a buddy of mine, Justin, who I, I put in the credits of the video, if you, if you look at the description of the video, it says this video would not have been possible without Justin Bailey. Go check out his Instagram. It's called the outdoor ethos. Um, he texts me and he says, I'm in Albany. I'm on my way back down to New York. Do you mind if I come out tonight? And I was like, yeah, dude, get down here. And, uh, he has a Jeep. So he managed to make it down the, um, down the incline and he could barely get out in that Jeep. Like the, a couple of days later when we were leaving, he barely got out of there. So that was lucky bit. Number one, lucky bit. Number two was inside this tent. There's a little kind of like a wooden bunk bed two cots on top of each other. And uh, I, I, I took the top cot and in the middle of the night, because I can't sleep because I know I'm surrounded by spiders, I'm awake the whole night because I hate spiders. <laughs> um, uh, I get up to go to the bathroom and I, the, the, I get on the little, you know, little shoddy ladder that's, that's hanging up there. And uh, the ladder just disconnects from the, from the bed and I go down hard. My neck still hurts from that. My shoulder still hurts but I landed directly between the toilet and the wood-burning stove, either of which would have messed me up good. So I got very lucky again there, even though I fell and that sucked, it could have been a lot worse. So then the next day we shot the whole thing. It took about 10 hours. And uh, then the last piece of luck came when we were like, we're not staying here another night. This was terrible. And he's an outdoorsman, he's an outdoor expert. And for him to say that, you know, it's not great. Um, I'm sure he could have stayed there if he wanted to, but he acknowledged that it was uncomfortable and full of spiders. He doesn't like spiders. Um, so we looked up hotels, what hotels are nearby, and boom, there's a casino five minutes away. <laughs> Brand new casino. And we go there, and we take big, amazing showers in our rooms and, and get all clean and dressed up. and Not dressed up because we had camping gear, but you know the, the best stuff we had. Went down, played a little blackjack, called it a night. And it was amazing. <laughs> um, then I came straight back here, edited the episode, and it was up the next day. So it was a, 
It's a whirlwind of a process. It's okay. It's been eight minutes now. At least I'm looking at the timer. It's probably been closer to ten minutes. This is getting to the consistency that I'd like. It's still. It's very hard to tell. I don't know. This is going to be an interesting experiment, guys. We might see this flop, which would be a good learning experience. You know, it's good to mess up sometimes. So don't don't beat yourself up too much. I'm not going to beat myself up if this doesn't work out. But it's feeling okay. Let's see. It's bouncing. See, it's bouncing back when I. Oh, you can't really see. Hang on, let me try doing it on this side. Oh, yeah, let's, here we go, right here. There we go, see that? It's bouncing back when I press it. Whoop. So that's, that means that we've got the gluten developed well enough and that it's ready for, an <coughs> for a nice rise. Let me get this bowl out of the way. Let me get another bowl. Let me wash my hands real quick. Sorry, folks. Be right back. Anything I'm uh, missing over there, Jake? Um, let's see, I got a couple nice things people are saying to us. Uh, first and foremost, Ari wanted to take this one. Okay, so, Ari, uh, what we Real got? quick, Ari, jump in here. Uh, hey, uh, Kate Eccles uh, was wondering if you would wish her luck on her math quiz. Hey, Kate Eccles. You know what I want to do? I want to wish you luck on your math quiz. Good luck on the math quiz. Go crush it. I was never good at math. I guarantee you're going to be better than I was uh, and am and continue to be. Um, good luck, Kate. Okay, now for something a little more sordid. Mr. Uh, Go Mr. Bob has an idea as to why the dough might feel a little light. What's, uh, what's that? He asked, did you forget to zero out your scale? Are you missing the weight of the bowl worth of flour? No, 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 yeah, I, I, um, I, I, I turned on the scale with the bowl on it, so it should have been zeroed out. That is a good, that is a good point, but, but I did turn on the scale with the bowl on it, so I think it should be fine. But that is a very good idea. I don't think it's that, though. I did add a lot of flour, but now it's, this is feeling like the consistency where I want it to be, and it's got the, the spring back that I'm looking for in the dough there. The, the, any indents that I put in there are spring right back, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna oil up this bowl a little bit. Oh, out of paper towels. Hang on a sec, folks. I'm run and grab some paper towels on the other side of the room. Oh no, what happened to the paper towels? Oh, there they are. Sorry, it's a constant, constant, uh, constant adventure in this place. I'm trying to figure out where things are. Okay. There we go. Sorry for leaving you. I will never leave again. Where is? There we go. Okay. So, yeah, so long story short, that, uh, that episode this week happened by, by the skin of my teeth. It just barely happened. But I'm glad it did. It was a lot of fun, and it seemed like people liked it. I'm putting this in an oil bowl here, and then I'm going to cover it. Go. Sorry, you had to see my face there. It happens occasionally by accident. And uh, we're going to cover this guy up, let him rest for 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Uh, I want it about doubled in size. There we go. All right, I'm going to put this guy aside over here. And uh, we can get started on our sour cream donuts. Because once we fry up these yeasted ones, I'm just going to dust them with sugar and fill them with... Um, with raspberry jam. I'm gonna skip the cream filling and the chocolate frosting because that's just gonna to be too much for me tonight. But, sorry for yelling. Uh, oh geez, where are my bench scrapers? Everything's all moved around. Here we go. Nothing like a bench scraper when you need to get rid of a whole bunch of crap, flour and stuck dough and all that good stuff off the countertop. There we go. So uh, who's, uh, who's cooking along with me tonight? Anybody making donuts at home? Have you, have you seen any comments of people saying that they're cooking along? Not particularly. I'd like to hear from some of the people cooking. A lot of people are commenting that they have done some of your recipes, but I'm not seeing any donut heads. Well, the, I mean, this is, you know, you really only make this one if you want to see what it's like to make donuts. Like. Donuts are so inexpensive and so tasty that it's very hard to justify making them. 
uh, by yourself. But it is a valuable experience to have as a home cook. I wouldn't recommend doing it, you know, every week or anything like that. But like, if you want to see what it's like, gain new appreciation for the things that you can get for like, you know, five cents a dozen or whatever Jim Gaffigan said. Um, it's sometimes it's nice to, to make them yourself. And that's one of the ways you can get a little bit more connected with your food. And, and also, a good deal that you make with yourself. I remember, I can't remember his name, but on, um, on uh, Cooked, uh, that Netflix special, there was that interview, that, uh, that uh, um, expert that they interviewed who said, you want to eat a pie? Eat a pie. You want to eat a cookies? Eat a, eat a dozen cookies. But here's the thing. Make the pie. Make the cookies. And, uh, you know, if you want to have donuts, make the donuts. I guarantee you're not going to be eating that many donuts because uh, this is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, but uh, I'm going to take a quick break here and then we're going to get into some sour cream donuts. Mm. Okay. Let's see. What do we need for sour cream donuts? We need cake flour. That's different. Uh, but we're using a stand mixer. Thank goodness. Oh, my gosh. Um, so I'm going to grab that, bring that over. We had a flour question earlier. Let's hear it. Can you use this flour uh, that you're using to make donuts to make fritters? Um, yeah, I mean, this is all-purpose flour, you know? All-purpose flour, I should be able to make fritters with that. I personally have never made... Also, there's a million different kinds of fritters. I assume that you're talking about sweet like apple fritters or something like that, you know, like donut fritters. And I believe those are made with, um, with, uh, with, with all purpose flour. They might be made with cake flour. I can tell you that we're making sour cream donuts with cake flour and sour cream donuts have a more similar texture to, to, um, fritters than, than regular donuts. So maybe you might want to use cake flour. Look up a, look up a recipe cause I've never made those before. Um, all right, so for sour cream donuts, uh, we need to get our dry ingredients into a separate bowl, not this one. So this time, being very careful to zero out my scale beforehand, let me grab, uh, oh wait, I still have the bowl there, that's fine, let me use that. Sorry, here we go, folks. We got this bowl, which I'm gonna turn on the scale with the bowl on it, so that should be teared, ready to go. I remember much more distinctly the texture of the dough of these donuts. These ones, I don't know if we're going to have time to make because I just saw in the recipe and just remembered that they need to be refrigerated for two hours. So we'll see how long it takes us to make the yeasted donuts, but um, I don't know if I got that in me. And I'll, just, I'll, post the, I'll post the results to Instagram or something like that if we, if we can't make it through. But we'll see. We'll see. I've been told that the longer the stream is, the better. But, uh, yeah, we all, got, we all got lives. I'm sure you guys don't want to stick here for God knows how many hours. So I'm, I'm opening this up in a really dumb way. I don't know why anybody would do that, but that was stupid. Um, it's, I'm measuring out 600 grams of cake flour. And cake flour is a much, uh, it's a f more finely milled flour, but it's also a very low gluten flour. That's the more important bit. Cake flour, I, again, don't quote me on this. Bread flour has a has a um, has a protein content of uh, of about twelve to fourteen percent. Protein is what you need to, for the creation of gluten, and um, bread flour is I think is around thirteen fourteen percent depending on the flour. Uh, regular flour is down around ten eleven percent, and I believe cake flour is down in the eight percent area. So very low glu gluten. That's why it's good for cakes because that's why it's called cake flour because it's designed for making tender pull apart kind of things not uh not chewy or dense or anything like that you so that's why we're using cake flour here with the sour cream donuts as opposed to the that smells weird um <laughs> or is that my oh it's the stand mixer it's like that old machinery smell you know what i mean like that have you, have you ever been on like a battleship from world war ii or something you just smell that old oil or whatever the, the stand mixer, yeah, solid state, I think is what you're smelling. So, 600 grams, 605. I'm fine with going a little bit over after the experience that I just had. So, but I can also feel, feel that I used more than half of my cake flour. So if I mess this up, it ain't happening. Um, put these scissors back. 
All right, we're measuring out 600 grams of cake flour, and then we need one and a half tablespoons of baking powder. That seems like a lot. I'm not sure how I feel about this recipe transcription. I guess we'll see. Like all things in life, we shall see. Um, we got one and a half tablespoons. I think I was a little shy there. Let me just put a little bit extra. There we go. And uh, what else was going in there? Two teaspoons of table salt. Let's see. We got this. And these are not yeasted donuts. They are right. You know, that's actually the, the, the amount of baking powder there actually makes sense now that I think about it. Because these are, these are unyeasted donuts. So the, any, any rise that they're experiencing, any expansion, is going to be owed to um, the baking powder. And uh, uh, so the, it does make sense that there'd be a lot in there. So t two teaspoons of table salt. Let me grab the table salts back here. I have so many pantries in this place, it's ridiculous. I have three different pantries. This stuff could be anywhere at any given time. So that's one. And well, these, these are only half tablespoons here. I'm also going to do a teaspoon, or I'm sorry, uh, this is a half a teaspoon measure here. I'm also only going to do a teaspoon and a half because, well, no. How about I follow the recipe? This one's a good idea. There, that's two teaspoons. There we go. All right. Um, so we are combining the baking powder, cake flour, and, tea, and table salt into a bowl. We're gonna be, um, we're gonna be uh, sifting that in here. Now into the stand mixer, we are combining five egg yolks, 250 grams of plain white sugar, and two and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take this off, thusly, set aside our dry ingredients, which we will address later. Let's move this over a little bit so it's not standing in our way so much. You guys can see what's going on. And uh, now I'm going to be very careful to tear this, obviously. Let's tear it up. There we go. And into this bowl, we're going to measure 250 grams of white sugar. And then we're going to add five egg yolks and 380 grams of sour cream, but in stages. So we're starting with sugar and egg yolks. How much sugar was it? 380 grams, oh no, 250 grams of sugar. Oh, ooh, came close. 240, 48, come on, 250, 351, I'll take it. <clears throat> All right, grab a sip of, mm. sip of gin lemonade here. And to this, we are adding, uh, we need five egg yolks. So let me grab the eggs. We got three here. We need five. Here we go. Oh, there's the chicken parm from last, from last night. I so want to eat that. I forgot that I haven't eaten dinner. So your boy's hungry over here. Um, are you guys hungry in there? Maybe we should order delivery. <laughs> Can I have the, yeah. Have there's the a... for, for dinner. There's a little bit of that Adults. chicken parm cake left, for sure. I'm not allowed to dream like that anymore. Okay, that's one egg yolk. I'm saving the whites here, because maybe I'll make an egg white omelet for dinner. I don't know. Also, just don't, you know, ooh, don't be wasteful whenever you can. Try to be, uh, try to conserve whenever you can. We got any uh, super chats or anybody, anybody uh, asking pertinent questions? Uh, yeah, let me see. We got a couple good questions here. Um, we got a super chat from Katie Gary. Thank you so much. She's been using your cookbook, expanding her repertoire of uh, meals, which is the most important thing you can do in life, really. Th that um, is really great to hear, Katie. Thank you. And Katie wants to know if you're going to do any more stuff from Shokugeki no Soma? Shokugeki no Soma. You know what that is? Duh, I don't think so. That's Food Wars. Oh, that's Food Wars, of course. That is the, the, the original, the Japanese name for Food Wars. Food Wars, I believe, is the Americanized name. And, uh, or maybe that's just the first half of the title, I can't remember. But um, yes, absolutely. I mean, you know, 
there's so much food to be done from from that show. One that I saw that I really want to make just because it's 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 wagyu beef. It's like a ton of Japanese A5 wagyu beef. That's four four egg yolks. Um, is there's a um, I can't remember what it's called. It's a I think it was a a don d o n, and it was a, it was a it was a, a flower of of medium rare. Japanese A5 Wagyu beef, but it was made by like a pretty obscure character in a pretty obscure episode. So I don't think it'd be that popular. It's just a great excuse for me to make something with Wagyu beef. I'm sure Sawyer would not be opposed to that. Yeah, I, I think that's a that. great, I think but, that's uh, a great idea. It's a wise idea, right? No, that's what I was thinking. That's so See, wise. he's always on my side. <laughs> he's always so got my best wise. interest in mind. <laughs> always. I always have your best interest in mind. Always. All right, and so that I'm goes for like, that goes for the chat people too. I'm, I'm trying to block all those people who just constantly spam one letter. I see you. Thank you, Sawyer, for keeping keeping things together here, because otherwise it would just be chaos. All right, let me get this in focus here. It looks a little soft. There we go. Got to make sure things are in focus for the people. All right. Whew. Here we go into the stand mixer. This goes. We are creaming together. Let's just make sure that I'm doing this right. I don't want to mess it up again. Five egg yolks, sugar, and two and a half tablespoons of unsalted butter. So let me grab the paddle attachment. My stand mixer. We're saying goodbye to Ari. Noise. Here it goes. We're oh, saying Ari's farewell off, to folks. old Ari. You want to come? You want to come on and say goodbye? No. All right. Give him a quick Ari, wave. Ari's taking off, folks. He's being a wimp about being on camera, but we'll, we'll forgive him. I'm kidding. Can you take that trash down? I'm kidding. I'm joking. Have it, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Later, dude. See you soon. Um, <laughs> that was my favorite thing that, uh, I don't know if you guys watch High Maintenance. High Maintenance is one of my favorite shows. It's my favorite thing that the guy would do. He was on his way out. He'd always ask, like, do you have any trash you want me to take down? And <laughs> he'd, just, like, he'd just be so chill. Like, he's there to sell you pot, but he's like, uh, I'll, I'll take the garbage out if you want. That guy's my religion, as I've said to many, many people. He, he's he's um, just the king of taking things in stride and just being chill with everything and anyone. And I want more of us to take a page out of his book. If you haven't seen High Maintenance, go check it out. It's on HBO. And if anybody knows Ben Sinclair, the actor who plays the guy, uh, have him hit me up because apparently he's hard to get a, a hold of because he's just riding his bike around Brooklyn like he does in the show. All right, we got one. And I know this is not the traditional way to measure butter. Generally, you want to get a stick and cut off two ta tablespoons, but I don't have any sticks right now. All I have is this soft European stuff. It's the only stuff I have at room temperature, and that's what we need right now so we can cream it together more easily with the eggs and the sugar. Two. And it was uh, two and a half, yeah, two and a half tablespoons. So now I'm just going to kind of eyeball half a tablespoon here. That was about right. Doesn't matter. If they're a little extra buttery, I, I honestly can't imagine that it will hurt if it's just like an extra quarter tablespoon of butter. Can't imagine that's going to undo the whole recipe. That was nice that Ari was able to hang out with us for a little bit. Ari's uh, part, of the, part of the crew here. He's a regular fixture in my home. Oh! Okay. <laughs> that, whoops. <laughs> that was, I thought that was the lock which is what I was going for. Let's try that again. There we go. That could have been worse. My hand could have been in there. It would be a very different kind of live stream. Hospital live stream. All right, so we're creaming together. These ingredients. I'm gonna grab a spatula, as Mr. Krabs would call it. Oh, that wasn't as cool as I was hoping it would be. It's funny, there's um, the things that I took on the camping trip, I'm talking even my camera and the um, video monitor here, all reek of smoke. Like they still smell like campfire. So I keep, I'm, I'm here in my kitchen, I keep getting huge whiffs of, of campfire. So I think that there's something on fire every other second here. It's a very, very stressful mindset to be in. Um, so now I believe we're adding half of the dry ingredients sifted and that is correct and then we're going to mix until incorporated and then add the sour cream 
and the rest of the dry ingredients and then mix for 45 seconds, scraping down the side of the bowl, sticky dough, we're good to go. Um, put that right there. And let's get this out of the way. I can never nail this. I can never get this in the position that I want, but that's good enough. Okay, let me grab a sieve. This is gonna be, all right, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take this off without trying to lose a finger here. I don't wanna lose a finger. That's very precarious. 10 bucks says that that falls. That's okay. All right, now we're adding together half about half of our dry ingredients here. I'm going to just eyeball it. Don't got to be super precise when adding things like half of things. I mean, I'm sure you do, but the, the, this is fine. So we're just going to sift this through, and the best way to sift really is to put your stuff in the sieve and tap the handle like so. And as you can see, it's all getting sifted through. The reason that we want this sifted is because we want to uh, try to prevent lumps as much as possible because this is not getting kneaded for eight minutes like our other dough. It's just getting mixed together for 45 seconds. So the potential for lumps is tremendous and uh, we, can, we can't have that. Try to accelerate this process a little bit. Man, my mixer smells like a, like, a, like, a, like a telephone from the 40s or something. Who the hell is that? Oh, is that Kevin, you think? All right, all right, okay. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. It's not the laundry guy like back in Harlem. That was uh. I think your mic fell down a little bit. My mic? That's oh, still there. Um, is it quiet or what's the problem? It's just a little muffled. Okay. I think that was just me talking muffled. You know how I do. So I think uh, I think my manager is about to join us right now, Kevin Grush, who um, we've actually streamed from his house in the past, a long time ago. Uh, and we also streamed from his house when we did the, oh, that wasn't his house, but one of his employees' houses when we were in uh, Nashville doing the barbecue live stream. The barbecue, uh, what was it, barbecue pork? Or was just the grilling episode? We did stuff other than pork, right? What did we make? What did we make in the grilling episode out in Nashville? Remember? Made the, the stuffed pork tenderloins. What else? For the life of me, I can't remember right now. Sausages? Maybe it was just pork. We did do sausages, but Kevin yeah, Kevin will remember because Kevin's not a not a not a burnout like me. He's gonna <laughs> not a couple of burnouts. Not a couple of burnouts like us. He's a, he's a responsible adult. And he'll remember. I just added the second half of the dry. I'm such a dunce. I just added the second half of the dry ingredients because I'm so excited. Kevin's here. <laughs> Whoops, I was supposed to reserve half of these. Maybe I can scoop some out, try to make it a little easier on myself. I also think that that's done for convenience's sake, so I don't think it's super necessary. But maybe just for accuracy, say, hey, what's up, dude? Welcome. Uh, I got so excited that you were here that I, did, I, I added all my dry ingredients at once, which I wasn't supposed to do. And you have, so you have a brown paper bag, I see. What's in there? <gasps> what is that? You want to come on camera, or do you, or do you want to hand it to me? It's up to you. Looks like uh, Kevin got got us some bourbon here, some much needed bourbon. Do you mind uh, serving me one, Kevin, so I can go back to the mothership? I was happy to do that. Thank you. All right, we got we have supplies, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I've got half the dry ingredients removed. Come on up. You you want to come in, guys? This is Kevin Grush, my manager. We've live streamed from his house before, a long time ago in Nashville. I love how you're waving off camera. Oh, I yeah. can't even see it. <laughs> uh, 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 there you go. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, I'm not in this position normally. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for bringing uh, whiskey. You want some? I would love some. Here, I'll pour you and Sawyer some, and you can bring him some in the other room there. Okay. Um, yep, all right. I got them right over here. I got uh, I got these two glasses for you and Sawyer, and then I've got Daddy's glass. You know. <laughs> you had this before? No, I haven't. What is this? So we got Noah's Mill, a genuine bourbon whiskey homemade in the hills of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Made in Bardstown. Ooh, Bardstown. I don't know where that is. The, the heart of whiskey. Okay. Well, there's cubes in the bottom freezer behind you, if you'd like. There we go. 
I'd take a cube. All right, Sawyer wants a cube. And thank, thank you. <laughs> I can't tell if you're saying that muted or not, but I assume that people can hear you. Um, yeah, everyone can hear me but Kevin. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Thanks, man. Thanks for saving the day. A little bit of brown stuff. Sorry, I'm late to the party. Mm. Please, you've been having a good time in the city? Yes, we just, uh, just came from Brooklyn. All right. From Brooklyn, ladies and gentlemen. That's where I used to live a long, long time ago. Have we got any Brooklyn folks in the house? Oh, sorry, bottom freezer right, be right behind me. You're going to have to... Here, I'll get them for you if you don't want to show face if you want to stay anonymous. You want... You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. All right, let's get this stuff incorporated. Boy, eggs and sugar alone taste real good, don't they? That's locked. We're just going to incorporate this, uh, these dry ingredients into the wet. Give her a little scrape down in a moment. Then we have to add 380 grams of sour cream. So let me uh, get ready to measure that out. Okay, that's starting to come together. Good stuff. All right, so got the rest of our dry ingredients right here. And let's grab the scale. Here's the scale. And once that, once this comes together, okay. We'll give it a little scrape because I'm feeling a bunch of, yeah, we got a bunch of wet stuff on the bottom that's not getting, not getting the attention it deserves. There we go. Get all that stuff off there. Actually, I don't, I don't know if there is actually. It's just like really packed together. Very dense. Interesting. Um, okay. So now we need to measure out 380 grams of sour cream, uh, which I have right here. With this one, I think this one's good. Cool. All right, am I missing any uh, good questions? Any any queries over there? Um, let's see. I can't hear you, see. by the way. I think our call got disconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just okay. explaining how it's hard for me to have a conversation with Kevin because I have to get out of your head first. You know. Oh, sorry, sorry, um, sorry. No, 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 not at all. Uh, we've had, we, we've got someone here. It just reminded me saying hello from the Philippines. We had a super chat a while ago asking for Filipino food. So we got to find a movie. You know, that's a nice idea. Yeah, can y'all uh, recommend some either Filipino movies or movies with Filipino food in them? Uh, the only... I was about to say, uh, hmm, I'm trying to think of the uh, Filipino movies that I've seen. Uh, I can tell you a really good Thai movie I've seen, but that's not the same at all. Um, so we got 380 grams of sour cream we're going to measure out here. 220, what's that? So we got 220, 285, 300, how much did I say? 380. We got 320 there. 360, we're almost there, almost there. Another big dollop. Dollop will do you. 377. 386, oh God. 370, what's happening? What did I say? 380. 378. My glasses just fell down. Everything's coming apart. There we go. 381. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. What's <laughs> Is it? Oh, no. He can, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'll, 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 uh, I'll, I'll stop talking to, talk, talking to you in there. Because you, you, you're creeping me out in here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're a wonderful man. I'm kidding. You can hang out in here if you want. No, just, that's I feel bad. You're just standing here silently. Yo, can I just tell you that we got a shout out from Rochester, and uh, that shout out was from a Kevin Dolan. What's up, Kevin, Kevin Dolan? Kevin Dolan's in the house. What's up, dude? Kevin Dolan's in the house. No way. H A C. Guys, we Wolves. went to school. We went to school with Kevin Dolan, an old classmate of ours. What's up, dude? Thanks for joining. Thanks for hope you're doing well, buddy. Really kind of you. Yeah, I hope you're doing good, man. I remember last time I saw you, I think we were playing poker or something. I remember there was that one in, time in, we were playing in, poker. In Shara's room down in the basement? No, it was at somebody's house, wasn't it? Or, I don't know. Um, maybe, actually, you know, I'm thinking of Darius. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I confused Kevin with Darius. 
Uh, but <laughs> it was at Darius Tahir's house, but he, Kevin wasn't there. But no, I mean, we were playing po- poker with Kevin in, uh, in Shara's room. Sorry, we'll, we'll stop talking about inside jokes that only three people of how many thousand understand? Where are we at right now? Yeah, just 6, what's 2, up, 200. Kev? Yeah, what's up, Kev? Thanks for joining us, dude. There we go. We got our dough coming together here. Everybody's getting incorporated, get to know each other. Oh, also, while you're doing this, I wanted to just mention, we had a comment a while ago. They're probably not here anymore. Maybe they are. Godspeed. Uh, Lemons. Is it weird that I'm 13 and I love to cook? Hell no. No, dude, it's not weird at all. That's when I started to cook, and I'm cool. Um, no, I'm kidding. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's not weird at all. It's amazing. The, the earlier you start, the more you're impressed your friends are going to be. And the more impressed your girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever you choose, is going to be. When you whip up some dope-ass meal and you're just a teenager, that's a good move, man. Or woman, whatever you are. Uh, lemons. Keep cooking, please. That's when I started to cook, and it has rewarded me time and time again, not just with the show, but just with the way that you connect with people and the way that uh, you can show people that you care about them. Cooking is a very powerful way to do that. All right, yeah, I'm giving this the beans. So I want it to get mixed up because it's, ooh, it's being stubborn. Okay, almost there. Let's really get it combined, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. All right. And that is our sour cream donut. Eventually gonna be our dough. It's very wet. It doesn't taste great. (laughs) Once it's deep fried, it's gonna taste great, but I'm also liking the way that our dough is looking back here. It's definitely rising and the uh, plastic wrap is inflated a little bit, which means the yeast is doing its job. As uh, Alton Brown so comically illustrates, yeast eats up sugar and then, and then burps up um, carbon dioxide. So the fact that there's gas accumulating means that the yeast is alive and doing its job and having a good time. So now I'm just going to scrape all this off, all this junk. Let's get all this off of here. This feels really sticky. I know I, know, I, know I said it was going to be sticky, but this is really sticky. Um, Get this guy off of here. That's still a bunch of good stuff in here. Let's not let's not miss that. It's just so damn sticky. Jeez. Oh boy. Wouldn't it be funny if I messed up both batches of these on a live stream? That'd be hilarious. Right, guys? <laughs> um let's hope that I don't do mess up both of these. I'd love for one of them to come out okay. Um, but when we were shooting the actual episode, I think the yeasted donuts took me like three tries. So I would not and will not be surprised if I mess this up. So this guy is, this, this seems familiar though. It, the problem is it just needs to be chilled out entirely. This needs to chill for two hours until it's solid enough to roll out, which we might not have in us tonight. It's already been an hour and 15 minutes. I don't know if I can, you know, wait two hours and then deep fry these. So we'll try. We'll definitely try. Let me just, uh, here's what we can do. This is a good idea. I just had a good idea. I don't believe it. I'm going to chill it in this pie plate. Whoa. I'm going to chill it in this pie plate, which We'll up the surface area of and lower the just general density of the dough, which means that it'll be able to chill out faster. Kind of like uh, if you, you know, if you had something you wanted to cool out really fast, you wouldn't leave it in a big ball. You'd spread it out on like a, you know, baking sheet or something and then chill that out. It would chill a lot faster. So making, flattening this out and upping its surface area is going to solidify it much more quickly. Um, do I need to oil this or anything? I think I don't. Let me just check. Um, yeah, I don't think I do. So let's just uh, let's just dump it in there. Let's see what happens. Oh, what am I missing over there, gents? We got any any folks talking, asking questions? 
Um, oh, we're all pretty mesmerized by that uh, gooping into the pot, you know? I'm pretty mesmerized by the gooping. That's why I wanted to distract with somebody else's thoughts because I don't have somebody, any of Somebody recommended using liquid nitrogen to cool it down. Oh, that's a great idea. Let me just grab my liquid nitrogen real quick. Yeah. We'll go Sorry, get did you that. take my liquid nitrogen? Guys, we're fresh out. Sorry. Yeah, I don't have any of my dry <laughs> ice handy. Ah, Sawyer, every time I think I have liquid nitrogen, I find that you raided my pantry. People are asking, are you going to put it in the freezer? No, because that's going to that's gonna chill it off too much. We just want it generally cold and firm. We don't want, like, parts of it frozen while other parts are chilled. Like, we need the whole thing just firmed up. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm just going to... Did anybody, anybody who watched the episode, does this look familiar? Does this look like the consistency of the dough? It looks like it to me. I think this is where it was at. Hmm. It's tastier than I was giving it credit for. It kind of tastes like floury cream cheese. <laughs> Delicious. Um, oh. That sounds Not like it's going to be good no matter what. Whatever it is, we're going to deep fry it. And we're going to care. Oh, yeah. And we're going to eat it. Yeah. Speaking of which, uh, maybe let's order some takeout or something. <laughs> I'm getting pretty hungry. Got a little bit of chicken parmesan down, down in, the, in the fridge from last night. Last night, guys, we went to a great, um, great Italian restaurant, which... While we were there, somebody at the table next to us uh, was a watcher of the show, and he said hi. So, sir, I don't think I got your name, but if um, if you're watching, thank you for saying hi. I hope, uh, and thank you for recommending the steak because the steak was fabulous. Um, yeah, we we were eating at a great uh, restaurant called uh, 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 Quality Italian last night in Midtown. And uh, yeah, let that be a lesson to anybody who's curious. If you ever see me on the street. Say hi. I love meeting fans. I love uh, meeting people who watch the show and who, who, who like to cook along or whatever. Just uh, just come up and say hello. I don't bite. Okay. That's in the fridge. So that's going for two hours. Um, we can't make the glaze yet because the glaze will start to set. So we have to make the glaze uh, later while the, uh, while the donuts are cooling off. So... Um, we can't make the filling because the filling is just raspberry jam. So we just have to wait for our dough to finish rising, which um, I think it's probably been about 20, 30 minutes since we, since we covered and set it aside. It has definitely grown. That's great. It has definitely grown. I wouldn't say by, by double yet, but it's probably grown by like 30, 40%. So this probably needs another... I'm going to put this over here on the stove if we go over to camera B. There's a little vent right here. There's a pilot light in this oven that's always on. Very hot pilot light. So I'm going to put it right over here. Actually, you know what? I'll put it, put it in here, and then that will protect it from the direct heat. And that's hopefully going to help it, uh, help it along a little bit and make it rise a little faster. And while we're waiting for that, we'll just answer some questions and talk to some, talk to some chatters. And with luck, maybe we'll have some donuts by the end of the night. Maybe not, though. That's something you have to be prepared for when you're an amateur chef like me. Sometimes things don't work out, and that is okay. Learn from those experiences. I have tried to show that on a recent episode, on my cinnamon rolls episode, where I messed up. You know, they were still perfectly tasty and still nice, but, like, they just weren't quite right, the cinnamon rolls uh, from Jim Gaffigan's stand-up. They just were a little off. They, 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 they were misshapen and the frosting didn't look quite right. And, um, th you know, they had bit, little gummy bits towards the bottom because I had sliced them when they were hot. So that made the, the dough compress into this gummy uh, little bits. And um, I wanted to show, like, you know, he, the, these are the, the demonstrable mistakes that I just made. And here are the exact ways in which your and result will improve if you if you you know learn from your little mistakes. So hopefully that's that was the takeaway from that. But um, oh, okay, let me pull up the window here. Am I missing out on any super chats here? We got um, <clears throat> yeah, we got a request for Mitchell. a Canadian episode. Yeah, very Mitchell generous Gren super Grenier. chat. Woo! Yeah, thank you. Twenty dollars from Mitchell Gr Grenier. 
a uh, very Canadian name, French Canadian maybe. Um, uh, uh, absolutely. Wait, Nanaimo bars. I don't know what that is. Poutine, hell yeah. Uh, Montreal smoked meat sandwich. I wish I could make that. I love those things. Um, but uh, p- p- poutine, I'm all about. So yeah, you can definitely expect me to uh, to be doing an episode as soon as we find a good example in fiction. So, so let me know if you if you've seen an episode, or maybe there can be a basics episode on that. Um, Robert J. Fishing, ten dollars. Thank you so much for a very very uh, generous contribution. Do you remember Louisiana Cooking with Justin Wilson or Yan Ken Cook? Of course I can with Martin Yan when growing up. Yan Ken Cook, I used to watch all the time. I used to, I, I never saw. Louisiana cooking with Justin Wilson, but I did see Yan Ken cook. I saw um, Easy Entertaining with, or Easy Italian, or Easy Entertaining with Michael Chiarello. He was the man. Um, I watched a lot of Alton Brown growing up. Like he he started in the late '90s or something, so or the mid '90s, I think. So I watched him growing up. Um, I watched uh, what was the what was that show with the two ladies, two old. I think it was something derogatory. It was named, called something derogatory, like two fat ladies or something like that. <laughs> like, I'm not making that up. It was something. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? I do know what you're talking about. I liked that show. Yeah, and I liked it too. But I, I just didn't want to say anything that sounded inappropriate because it was called something like that. I think it was called Two you're Fat Ladies. You're absolutely right. I'm looking it up now. Although I accidentally wrote Two Fat Laddies. <laughs> yeah, Two Don't Fat Don't do an image search, would you? Two fat, <laughs> Two fat ladies, image stars, safe to off. Uh, yeah, they had uh, 24 episodes. BBC Two. What? That's it? Yeah, I thought more too. I thought that that was like a major cultural phenomenon. You tell me that it was only 22 episodes? There were four seasons, and yeah, a couple wow. episodes a season. What was it? PBS? What was it? It was the BBC. The BBC? What's going on? It must have been PBS in the United States. Um, or the Food Network or Cooking Channel in the United States, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that. wow, I haven't thought about them in a while. Yeah, Yen Same. Ken Cook was another favorite. Uh, Michael Chiarello, wherever you are, man, good job. You kept me entertained when I was a kid. He was just so easy breezy, and he had the most beautiful kitchen with all his copper pots and natural woody kind of stuff. I liked him a lot. Um, and we got a new member over here. John Holder, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you for anybody else who became a member while I was cooking and I didn't see. Thank you for anybody, anybody who's joined. Um, memberships are a way to get access to exclusive content behind the scenes, um, early access to episodes, emojis, badges, um, all different kinds of cool stuff. And it's five bucks a month. If you hit the join button right next to subscribe, Uh, You can join as a Binging with Babish channel member and get access to that stuff in the community tab of my channel. Go check it out. There's already a bunch of exclusive videos posted. There's an exclusive episode, uh, Hot Pockets from Jim Gaffigan's stand-up. Hot Pockets! Um, There's a behind-the-scenes look, uh, kind of a goofy thing from Red Dead, the Red Dead Redemption video, which eagle-eyed viewers uh, will notice that I lit a match on the bottom of my boot and, and use that to light the fire. It wasn't very visible. It wasn't as cool looking as I thought it would be. But we did that by gluing a, um, you know, a match strike strip to the bottom of, of my boot. And we did it over on the tent. So I had to hop over on one leg to, to the fire. And uh, in a cowboy outfit, it looked particularly silly. And my buddy took video of it. So it's there for your viewing pleasure. Um, oh, we got some super chats here. We've got Braden Roseborg, um, six dollars sixty six cents. That's 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 ominous. Uh, thank you very much though for a, for a generous donation. Jesse gave five Australian dollars. Good day from Australia. Good day. I've uh, been watching you from the start, mate. Like, this feels weird saying this without an ac- ac- accent. I'm really worried if I try one, it's going to sound really dumb. Uh, I only know how to say one thing with an Australian accent, and that's the word uh, bogans, which I think is a word for like, kind of like a, um, I don't know, like, like, like what, we, what, 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 we, what we would call a hillbilly in the United States. I think that's the Australian word. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what bogan means. And I know, and I, I hope it's not something like offensive or something like that. I don't think it is. Um, I heard it on Summer Heights High. 
So it very well could be something offensive, but I learned it from Summer Heights High. Anyway, you were talking. Uh, we've been watching from the start, Nate, Mike. Uh, it's been amazing to see how far you've come. Keep going, well done. Thank you so much, Jesse. That's very, very kind, and thank you for the very generous donation. Um, Adamon one gave 550, I don't know what that is. Is that North Korean and okay? What is that? No, it's not North Korean. Uh, I meant South Korean, but that's not right. Um, that was dumb. Uh, uh, 50, I don't know what currency that is, but thank you so much. Norwegian, of course, and okay, Norwegian dishes. Um, ever plan on making any Norwegian dishes or any game-related dishes? Uh, yeah, I mean, and this past week's episode was game-related. It was a game, wild game stew, um, which was an interesting experience. I can't say that I've had too many pop, uh, positive experiences with wild game at very nice restaurants I've had. I've, I've had good venison or whatever. And actually, when I was a kid, my dad would take me hunting, and at the hunting camp, they would make venison steak sandwiches I remember the most, the most red, uh, hillbilly experience that I've ever had in my entire life was uh, we were at the hunting camp and a guy pulled up in his, in his you know, Ford F-150 or whatever and pulled a deer carcass out of the trunk that was frozen, or not the trunk, the bed of the truck that was frozen, and to defrost it enough that he could make slices of it for sandwiches, he threw it on his engine block. And I was like, wow, this is, some, this is legit. Um, but yeah, then they sliced it off razor thin and then fried it up in a pan, like minute steaks, with, uh, and made sandwiches out of it. So good. Uh, but yeah, at, at Iman 1, I, I just did some wild game. I'm looking forward to exploring it in the future. We got new members. AMA, thank you for joining. Uh, Thresh, thank you for joining. Did I miss anybody here? Did I miss any big super chats or anything? There should be. We got a $5 super chat here from Monica Johnson. My husband wants to know if you have thought of making any food from Fallout. We loved the Breath of the Wild episode. I've thought about it, but the things in Fallout are a little fantastical. You know, there's irradiated foods and Nuka Cola, which just sounds like a, a cola. Um, so I'm not sure what I can what I can accurately recreate from Fallout. But I've got some friends that are big fans of that series. Ari, who just left uh, tonight, is a huge uh, Fallout fan. Um, so one day, once, once, once I figure out something worth doing, maybe when, when the new Fallout comes out, what's the name of the new Fallout? Fallout 76 or something like that? Fallout 76, yeah. Did I just nail it totally out of thin air? Yeah, I think you did. Wow, okay. Um, huh. Oh, sorry, you're saying that my, I sound muffled to you. That's a different mic. I'm sorry. I was thinking about the... How's that? Is that better? That sounds good. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, anything for you. It doesn't really matter what these guys can hear. Yeah. Them, it's all right? just you and me, buddy. It's just you and me making donuts. Don't say, don't say the T word, tug speedman. Nobody can see what you're saying, but I see it. Uh, Nathan, <laughs> Nathan, and speak of the devil, Nathan Titmus. <laughs> Greetings from Long Island. What's up, neighbor? Uh, I went to Hofstra University, so I'm not a Long Island native, but I... Um, have spent my fair share of time there. So I spent a lot of time in, uh, in uh, Hempstead, New York. So uh, what's up, dude? Love, lo love your, your donation. Thank you so much. Uh, Freelo, $4.99, Home Alone, Little Nero's Cheese Pizza for, uh, for a Christmas episode. That's Home Alone 2, I think, that you'll find, uh, lost in New York. Or Chinese Turkey from uh, Christmas Story. You will also find that I've actually done uh, Christmas Story Turkey, which is actually a, a Peking duck. Um, so go check that out. I've, I did that for Christmas last year. I've been trying to think of what to do for Christmas this year. So if anybody has any suggestions or ideas, hit me up. Alex Holmes, five, five pound, five uh, English pound donation. Uh, what's your favorite video of your own? That's an interesting question. I'm also, I'm Greek. Do you think you might be doing any Greek dishes ever? I'm sure that I will. I personally love Greek food, but I can't think of anything, nothing comes to mind besides like my big fat Greek wedding as like a specifically Greek piece of media, but that's just what I've seen. I'm sure that there's other stuff out there. So let me know if you have any ideas, but um, I love Greek food, so I hope I can do it one someday. What's my favorite video of my own? That's a very hard question to answer because I actually hate watching my own videos. Um, I tend to try to leave the room if people are watching them. I, Ari was watching one earlier today, and it made me very uncomfortable. Um, I'm trying to think. What is my favorite one? I really like the one that I just made, honestly. The Red Dead one like, was a lot of fun to make, and I was telling Sawyer, 
uh, you know, the, as soon as I got home, I was exhausted. I had just spent two days in the woods. I had barely slept. I cooked for 10 hours while shooting and with smoke in my face and just like miserably tired. But I still, as soon as I got home, I plugged the footage in and just started editing immediately because I was so thrilled with the way that it looked and the way that the stew came out. It looked just like the one in the video game. So I, I got to really just like have a lot of fun with that one and be, you know, silly and creative. And, and uh, so it's going to go down as one of my favorites. If I had to pick a favorite, I, I, probably the Timpano episode is my second episode ever. It was the most challenging dish I've ever made. And it came out like just right. And I had all my friends there. Sawyer was there with, at the time with, with his girlfriend who became his wife. He proposed to her that night. I'm kidding. You didn't actually do that. Um, the ring was but, in the, in the Timpano. Timpano. Yes, the ring was in the Timpano. We didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't leave that in the video, even though that's incredibly yeah. romantic. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, that, that's probably my favorite episode. It was, uh, it was a very, it was a very exciting experience for me. Um, anyway, long time talking about that. Sorry. Um, new member. Thank you, Crapple Jacks. <laughs> thank you for, thank you. Um, let's see, Karen Breeden. Uh, this donation is purely for the deer story. Do you hunt or fish yourself? Um, uh, thank you for, for the donation for the deer story. Uh, I haven't fished in a while, but I used to love to fish. Uh, it's, you know, it's just hard to hunt or fish here in New York City or in New York State in general. It's, uh, it's not, a, not a great state for hunting. I used to do a lot with my dad when I was a kid. I do miss fishing. Sawyer just went uh, deep sea fishing for a bachelor party and has an incredible photo of himself holding this gigantic, what was it, a sailfish? Yeah, we should do that. It was like a bass or something, I don't know, but it was uh I would love awesome. to do that, but I get Let's very much sick. Uh, no, it wasn't that bad. But, it really wasn't. It's, you know, it's an easy uh, ride. We were out on uh, Cape Cod. Holler at me if you're uh, out on the Cape right now. This was in Truro. Mm. Let's, go to, let's go to Vegas instead. Uh, ben Rose... 499 please do more food from the office you should recreate pam and kevin's ultra feast i that must be from seasons like six seven or eight because i didn't i stopped watching after michael left uh, so yeah I'll, i think I'll, she's I'll pregnant i think she's pregnant uh, okay yeah, well that's that is a funny concept that's uh it's a funny concept that she'd be pregnant and kevin would be like i'll eat that um mitchell grenier is back my canadian friend uh made another super chat describing Nanam, Nanaimo bars and other dishes. Been watching since Timpano. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, man. Thanks again for another donation. Dalton Paul, thank you for your donation of four ninety nine. Loke Desad six. Would you five dollars? Thank you so much. Would you ever consider making anything from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? I would if it were doable. But all the food in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is fantastical and not real. And I, you know, I, I don't want to make. You know, food themed from movies. I want to make like the food from movies. So it's hard for me to do that. I, I, the one that I've always wanted to try the most from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is that little um, flower teacup that like he finds a little flower and he just like picks it off and he drinks the nectar or whatever's in there out of it and then <laughs> takes a little bite of it and it's this crunchy little and it's like it's the most delicious looking little thing. I imagine it being like this little lemon drop thing with like a vanilla wafer cup or something like that. So maybe one day if I can do that. Um, Alex Cougar, really important question. What do you use to cover food? It looks like wet paper. I'm really confused. I use, and this is not an ad. It's just what I use. It's called Glad Press and Seal. It's a little bit more expensive than plastic wrap, but it's very forgiving, and it clings to glass like nobody's business. It just, or to most things, really. It sticks to things that normal plastic wrap has a hard time sticking to, so I, I, I adore it. Um, Simon Van Der Tang, five euro donation. Thank you so much. Watch every single video you make. I just came home completely drunk. This is without a doubt my favorite channel on YouTube. Cheers from the Netherlands. Cheers to you. Get to sleep. Don't drive. <laughs> I'm glad that you're home. Uh, thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for the, for the super chat. Lily Vogel, hi, chef. You are one of my favorites and one of, my, and one of the people who inspired me to go to culinary school. It's amazing. Congratulations. Enjoy culinary school. I never went to culinary school, and I wish I had because you're going to have an incredible level of knowledge beyond beyond what I have, and you will pr probably make donuts and not screw up both batches, like I think I'm doing right now. Um, Pixlet uh, gave five dollars. Thank you. Hey, I'm in middle school, and for the past three months, I'm sorry for cursing before. 
Hey, I'm in middle school and for the past three months I've been watching and cooking with your videos and my family. You've inspired me. Thanks. That's so nice to hear. I cannot believe you're getting a start that early. That is amazing. Keep cooking. Keep cooking with your family. That's so nice. Please keep it up and thank you. I can't believe you gave me five dollars. You're in middle school. Go spend that on fun things, on, on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Or, uh, what, what do middle schoolers do nowadays? Candy, Tamagotchis. Candy, 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 Tamagotchis. <laughs> um, uh, pogs, you know. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, Pixlet. That's, that's really nice. And keep, Slammers. Keep cooking with your family. Slammers. Yeah, no, well, Slammers, I mean, $5, I don't know. Um, to touch an emu. <laughs> to touch an emu is, is a really funny screen name. That's very funny. Sorry. Uh, $5 to touch an emu. Uh, becoming, being an upcoming public figure in the cooking scene, have you caught any heat <laughs> for your voca videos focused around meats? Yeah, generally, but like, you know, meats, meats, uh, still a very a mainstream thing. And, you know, I, 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 I fully acknowledge that, uh, Eating meat is bad for you, it's bad for the planet, but it's still a very large part of our lives as a, a, a most cultures lives and mine and, and many people on this, on this big blue ball of ours. And, and um, you know, I, 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 try, I try to uh, go weekday vegetarian as much as I can. I've, I've made that, that public knowledge that I try to uh, reduce my meat consumption as much as possible. Um, but uh, I, I personally, I think that there are some steps that, that you can take to more ethically eat meat. You can uh, eat meat from, from ethical sources. It costs more, but as a result, you eat less meat because you're spending more for it. So you buy less and you end up eating more vegetables. And you're also eating meat that tastes better because it's coming from happy, well-cared-for animals. It's a win-win-win-win. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to advocate for the, the better treatment of animals and the... Um, the uh, uh, more ethical uh, uh, cultivation and consumption of meat, but uh, I am a, I'm an omnivore, so uh, you know this. Anybody who has a problem with that, I'm sorry, but uh, I admire you for what you're doing. Any vegetarians and vegans out there, as long as you're not shoving it down my throat like a religion, uh, I, I am very thankful for the contribution that you're making to our planet and uh, uh, and to everyone around you. Um, Cooking from scratch gave ten dollars. Thank you so much. We'd love to see a behind the scenes vid on how you film your vid slash streams. Looks so professional. We'd love some tips. You can you can see some of that uh, in the three million subscriber special. You can see my latest uh, filming setup. You can also see my last filming setup in my last apartment in the two million subscribe or the one million subscriber special. Um, yeah, yeah. So go check those out. There's also a behind the scenes uh, video available on Patreon. It will become available about, to YouTube members very, very soon. Um, but thank you so much for your very generous contribution. Really appreciate it. Adam Curtis, 499. This is quickly becoming my favorite channel on YouTube. Love your work. Thank you so much, Adam. And thank you for your kind super chat. Uh, Sarah, I love Eat What You Watch. Thank you. Will you come out with another cookbook? Also, have you ever been to Canada? Thanks for the videos. I have been to Canada. I'm from Rochester, so I've been to Toronto all the time. And thank you for buying the book. I do have a new cookbook coming out in fall of 2019, the official Binging with Babish companion cookbook, everybody. The first 100 recipes from the show coming out next year, fall. Keep an eye out for it. Uh, thank you so much for your very generous con contribution. Smelly Mouse One gave 20 bucks. Thank you so much. Very, very generous. Thank you. Love watching your videos. My mom loves the cookbook I bought for her. I also enjoy eating your recipes. That's great to hear, man. Thank you so much. That's really, really kind. Function One gave $5. Hey, Babish, my dad went to get some cheese, but that was eight years ago. Should I get started on this omelet without him? Yeah, yeah, I think, um, unless he's getting some really fancy cheese, yeah. You know, my, my, uh, my childhood uh, cat did that, you know. Just went out for, to get a mouse and never came back, and I'm, I'm still waiting on that mouse. This is a dumb joke, sorry. Uh, the Rubber Ducky gave $5. Hey, Andrew, love your videos and streams. I, I just want to know that what does your espresso machine make and model do you recommend? I'm a barista by trade. I mean, I shouldn't be making recommendations to you if you're a barista because I don't know anything about coffee. I know good coffee and bad coffee, and that's about it. I know if you, if you blindfolded me and had me taste like a nice, you know, 
cup of joe and some gas station coffee, I could probably tell you the difference. But that's the that's the extent of my knowledge. That being said, this is a Breville um, single boiler uh, espresso machine with a built-in burr grinder, and it's very well received by the coffee community. I've definitely gotten flack from you know serious espresso heads that are like, how do you not have this machine that costs three thousand dollars and then this two thousand dollar grinder? I'm like, I don't care that much. Like, I like coffee, but you know, let's let's take a breather. But this this thing has been great. It's it's you know, it heats up in like 15 seconds. It makes a real good cup of espresso, real nice americano. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely enjoy it. Joel Mulvena uh, for 4.99. Thank you so much. Love your pasta puttanesca video. I'm making it right now. Lol. Keep up the great videos. Enjoy that pasta puttanesca. I ended up liking it a surprising amount considering it was filled with olives and anchovies and all the other things that I hate in the world. Um, son of a pizza man. <laughs> What's up, dude? $5 says, hmm, pizza donuts? May, uh, maybe. I don't, probably not. Um, but thank you <laughs> for the $5. Thank you very much for the contribution. I can't say that I think pizza donuts would sound great. I'd prefer pizza bagels, if I'm honest. Luke from Fromager uh, gave five Australian dollars. Hey, from Australia, Babish, I love the show for ages. I don't know if this is a known movie, but you should do a hot Chico roll from Brand New Diet. I can't say I've heard of that, but we'll add it to the list. Guys, let's, let's look that up and let's see what that's all about. Let's take a look at our dough here now that we got a little bit of a lull in the, in the super chats. It's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Let's see if it's... Let's see what we think here. I'm going to uncover it and just take a peek. That's looking pretty well risen. It's probably not twice its size yet, but I am running out of patience. <laughs> so, hmm. It comes down to, like, a value uh, proposition between do I want to keep waiting for this or should I start making it and just hope for the best? And it's a very interesting uh, sort of uh, thing to weigh there. I'm going to give this another 10 to 15 minutes. I just want it to, like, just touch the plastic wrap. I just want it to just touch it. <coughs> Pardon me. That's just going to be another few minutes. I'm going to put it over here. Clearly, being near the warmth has uh, helped it out a little bit. So I'm going to keep it over there. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a couple more minutes. We'll keep, we'll keep chatting for a bit here. I'll start, you know, uh, talking to people who, okay, we got uh, Blind Charo, five Canadian dollars, thank you so much. Can you possibly make Mystery Food X from Persona 4 or LeBlanc Curry from Persona 5? Somebody just asked me about that curry from Persona 5. There's apparently a, a very accessible recipe from it, uh, like a very real recipe. So definitely something I'd be interested in doing. Um, thank you for the donation and for the suggestion. 20 Australian dollars from Validated Tech. How did you get the bear meat for the Red Dead 2 Redemp Red Dead Redemption 2 app? Uh, it's from a from a farm. Sorry, I'm looking it up right now. It is called elkusa.com. Elkusa.com has uh, farmed bear meat, uh, which I, I know doesn't make any sense, but they told me that it's like a, like a bear preserve, and anytime one of them gets, gets uh, uh, mortally injured or dies naturally, they get the carcass and they process it. So, it's bears that are living normal, natural lives, and when one of them dies, they just eat it, or they let us eat it. I guess I don't really know how it works, but that's where. And thank you so much for the very generous donation. Uh, Crapple Jacks is back. Hey, uh, Five dollars. Thank you. Hey, Babs. Three things. One, thanks to you, I now make homemade pizza, pasta, and risotto on the regular for my household. That's awesome, dude. Th th that's great to hear. That's only one. Or are those the three things: pizza, pasta, and risotto. Awesome. Keep it up. Uh, Donovan Li with ten dollars. Thank you so much. Very, very generous. Your videos are great, and they inspire me as an amateur cook. Been a long-time fan. Just moved to Queens from upstate. Hey, that's what I did, except for I moved to Brooklyn from upstate. But then I moved to Queens eventually. Do you think you'll ever do a fan meetup or anything? I did one once last year, about this time last year, and it went great. I don't know why I haven't done more. Yes, I definitely will be doing fan meetups in the near future. I uh, just got to find the right venue. The one I did last year was in September, and it was in Central Park, so it was perfect. It was a potluck. We went out and did a, a picnic. Um, 
I, I will, uh, I'll be announcing, uh, you know, go to, go to, go to meetups. There is a, an official uh, Binging with Babish meetups page. Go check it out and sign up and uh, keep an eye out for notifications. Um, Tim Belmont, watching from New Jersey. Love the videos and the stream. Have you ever tried to make sourdough bread? I have, and it is hard. Um, I, uh, yeah, it's hard. Uh, be, 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 uh, be, be, just, just keep at it. I, 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 it's way too much for me to talk about right now. Uh, I hope to do a basics episode on, on sourdough bread very, very soon. Uh, Max Gomez gave $10. Thank you so much. Look, if you had one shot or one opportunity to seize everything you wanted in one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? This sounds like a, a motivational poster, isn't it? That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, Crapple Jacks, number two, I am visiting New York for the first time early next month. Do you have any go-to restaurant slash experiences outside of the touristy stuff? I do, but, ah, oh my God, um, so many things. Um, Whew, where to start? Uh, I would definitely check out New York City's ramen scene. Um, it's very hot right now. Uh, I would check out Toto Ramen, T-O-T-O. -T -O. It's up in Midtown. It's the best tonkatsu ramen in the city, I think. Um, I know Sawyer is an Ipudo man. Um, yep, that I really like where we it. order from now. What's that place we order from? Oh, geez. I can't remember the name of it. E e e -K -C. It's, it's three letters and then ramen. I think it's EKC or e e -A -K, e -A -K ramen is very good. Yeah, e -A -K ramen. That's pretty good. And they're not popular enough yet, so they don't have like a you know, line out the door. Uh, Mia Mia, what kind of eggs do you buy? And in your opinion, what type of eggs do you think are the healthiest? I don't know if there's a healthier egg. I can't give you an opinion on that because I don't know. Um, I get, you know, cage-free, whatever, you know, humanely used eggs because happy animals taste better. It's better for the environment, it's better for, for, you know, the animals, and they also just, they make tastier food when they're happy, they're, when they're not stressed out and filled with, with, with all kinds of drugs and antibiotics and stuff, they're, they're, they're going to make better tasting food. Trisha Foote gave four ninety nine. thank you so much. What are some of the things you like to do away from YouTube? I like a little bit of this, uh, I like, um, I mean, I cook when I'm not, when I'm not making the show, I do, uh, I cook for my friends and family and and, uh, and, and romantic interests. Um, I, uh, I, I ride my bike a lot. Um, I read, I write, I've been writing a lot because my deadline is looming and I have a lot more to go, but I'm, I'm writing like crazy. Um, I love getting out of the city. That's why I got a car. It's pretty crazy to have a car in the city, but it's great to just get out. And that's what I was able to do this past weekend. I was able to get out and experience an entirely different part of New York that I might have not have otherwise experienced. Um, I watch a lot of King of the Hill. I watch a lot of The Sopranos. I watch a lot of Frasier. Um, and me and my boy Sawyer hang out. And we go out to restaurants and chill, you know? Uh, it's a good time. Um, Ren Andrews, which is creepily close to my name. Um, thank you very much for the $10 uh, uh, donation. My father... And I love to watch you. You encourage him to start eating again from chemo. Thank you. Please make a shout out to Mark Andrews. Shout out Mark Andrews, especially if that's your father. Congratulations on, uh, on uh, I don't want to say congratulations yet, but keep fighting if that's the case. And if not, sounds like you're over chemo. Congratulations. That's an incredible thing to surmount. And uh, if you're not over it yet, stay strong, keep eating, keep fighting. You can do it. It's, uh, it's a hell of a disease that's... that's um, that's affected a lot of people close to me, and uh, I've seen, I've lost some people to it, but I've also seen some people that I, I love dearly beat it, and and they are stronger for it. So just keep it up. Big shout out to Mark Andrews. Keep it going. We're with you, buddy. And uh, thank you, Ren, for 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 sharing this with your dad. Um, Carrie Ann Bra Braden, five dollars. Haven't you guys heard Eminem? Please make mom spaghetti from Eight Mile. So many people have asked for that. I'm definitely, uh, definitely going to figure that out someday. Uh, Mitchell Grenier is back, my Canadian friend. Do you play the games you make food from? I've been playing Red Dead Redemption like crazy, yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I also played, I almost finished Spider-Man, but then Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, so I stopped playing. Um, but I did play Spider-Man a great deal, and also I played uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So yeah, all the video games that I've made food from, I have played to great, in great, uh, at great length, 
is the word that I was looking for. I think our dough is where it needs to be. I think maybe where we're, we're at. It just touched the plastic wrap a bit. It's looking, that's looks, that looks double to me. That looks double the size. I'm, I'm, I'm calling it. I think that's it. Um, so we're unwrapping. We're going to get back to cook, cooking here. I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss anything. Got one more super chat and then I'm done. Alan Jones, $5. Binging with Babish Sourdough feet Brad Leone. Just saying, absolutely. Brad is the sourdough master. He's, he's the master of things that are alive. Let's see here. Okay, so we are... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God, guys. This has two, this has two, two, uh, two rises. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay, so this was supposed to rise for an hour until double in size, which is what I think we did. I think we have double in size here. But now we need to roll it out, cut them into donuts, and then place them on a floured baking sheet and let it rise for another 45 minutes. <sighs> okay. Let's just, let's just move forward. If we lose energy, if we lose steam, then, then so be it. We've been going for about two hours now. Uh, and and we, we shall soldier on as long as possible. But I have people in the other room that have normal lives to lead. Mm. So, we got this here. Let's, uh, let's turn it out onto a lightly floured surface. It's feeling good and tacky right now, so I don't want to don't overflower it too much. I just want to dust down here just a little bit, just to keep it from sticking. I'm going to grab my dowel, just a bit more, I'm going to grab my dowel. I've been using a dowel to roll things out recently instead of a rolling pin. It's a little more challenging because it's so small, so it's harder to get things even. I'm going to roll that in the flour as well, get that nice and floured up. Let's dump that out. That's looking right. That's looking good. Lightly flour both sides here. Okay, good stuff. And let's roll her out to about maybe a quarter inch to a half inch thickness ish. This is actually behaving very nicely. It's it's got a good amount of spring back to it. It's not too tacky, it's not sticking to my work surface, but it's not uh, too dry either. I have, I have higher hopes for this than I had a moment ago. So hopefully we, we rescued it from the from being too sticky. Let me get this nice and centered so we can see what I'm doing here. That's not centered. That's centered. Okay. There we go. There we go. We got ourselves a nice dough around here. Just want to get out to a nice relative thinness. We don't want to go too thin though because you probably saw my donuts in the video got a little bit too thin for comfort. These, this is pretty big. That's big for a donut. I don't know. If, is that too big? I don't know. I feel like that's too big. <laughs> um, what's a donut? When you pick up a donut, that's a donut. That's a, that looks like a donut to me. I'm going with this. All right, let me get my uh, floured work surface ready. What we need is... Uh-oh, that's not good. Oh, here we go. What we need is a... Grab it here. Uh, we need a rimmed baking sheet that we have lightly floured just to prevent the dough from sticking. So I'm just going to hit this with just a little bit of flour. Shake her around. Just get her all coated up there. Spread it out a little bit. That's another thing I like to do if I want to get it dusted. I get it all stuck in my hand like that and then just boop, 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 boop. And that kind of helps dust it around. There we go. I'll put that... Ooh. That's precarious. I'm going to put that right there. And then we got to cut our donuts here. That's big. That's okay. You guys like big donuts, right? That's what's hot. On, on Instagram is big donuts. Or so I have read. There we go. So I'm just pressing and twisting here to really separate these donuts from their their captors. What? And there we go. Make sure that those are good and separate. 
and uh, yeah, I'm running out of room here, so I think I'm going to have five good donuts, and then the rest are going to be a little misshapen because they're going to be made from the scraps. There we go. We got our main attraction donuts here. These are the new ones to write home about. We got a you know, this lightly floured surface. Hopefully these aren't going to stick because I really lightly floured them. And then I'm going to take the rest of this and the, the, you know, what's unfortunate is that once you've uh, sort of pressed down and reshaped this, it's never going to be the same smoothness and consistency wise. What I'm trying to do is stretch it into a ball so at least the top will have a consistent sort of texture to it. But the other thing is once, we, once you've, it's very hard to roll out after that because we've excited the gluten and we've got, gotten all the gluten all tensed up and everything. And it's, uh, it's harder to roll out now because we, uh, we, uh, we, we agitated and jostled it a bit too much and now the gluten's all like, Argh! so it's harder to roll out. But we mustn't be wasteful, so I'm getting at least two more donuts out of this, out of this son of a bee. It's also full of air bubbles now, which is also not good. Not what you want in a donut. There we go. That's, Good enough. Oh, it's not, not big enough. Maybe a little bit bigger. Guys, uh, I know we just ate really like unhealthy and big last night, but I need a big meal after this. I'm hungry. I don't know about you. I am dying. Okay. Let's see if I can't get a donut out of here. All right. That's looking pretty, pretty normal. A little thicker than the other ones. Let's just go with six donuts. That's, that's fine. I will cover and refrigerate this with the spare plastic wrap. There we go. And I will use this in my downtime as an experiment. We'll see what happens with donut dough when you refrigerate it overnight. See what happens. Okay. Fridge that. <clears throat> donut cutter's going in the sink. And now I'm just going to cover this guy up. Then after that, I think I need to take a bathroom break. So, Jake, if you want to get that yeah, Be Right will, Back card uh, ready. I will press the Be Right Back card whenever we need. Someone was saying you should toss those in the oven for like a little hot box um, proofing. That is an excellent place to proof uh, dough. And that is a great idea. But the problem is that I have an industrial oven in here. And this oven, without... Just because the pilot light is so powerful, this oven's ambient temperature is about 175 degrees, which is way too high for proofing. Uh, it will, it will kill the. It will, it will essentially just bake them very weakly, uh, so we can't have that. So unfortunately, but the good thing is that if we come over here by the stove, this right here you can't see it, but there's a vent that is venting that. Um, that unused oven air out into the world. So I'm just gonna put this right in front of that and that will help these proof a little faster. It's the, it's the equivalent of putting it in an off oven. If you're at home and you have a normal, you know, residential oven, an off oven is an excellent place. Gas oven, really, not, a, not an electric oven. Even an electric oven is, is fine. But a gas oven in particular, because you typically have a pilot light that is just slightly heating the oven. Uh, that's a great place to proof bread and donuts and all the kinds of stuff that needs, needs a little encouragement. Okay, so let's get the uh, Be Right Back card going because uh, Daddy needs to, uh, have to go to the Wiz Palace, as uh, Leslie Nope used to say. And uh, I will be right back, folks. Stay tuned.
right, folks, sorry for about that. I'm back. I'm better than ever. I'm just going to refresh this page here, see what we're doing. Okay. We're back, folks. We only lost about a thousand viewers. <laughs> oh, well. Um, we've also decided to just sort of forge ahead with the uh, donut making because um, I am starving and I don't know if I can wait for these to rise. So we're going to do this as an experiment. I think I'm going to fry like three of these and just see what happens. What happens to donuts if you fry them without a second rise? Do they fall flat? Do they over puff? We will see. I'm over at camera number two and I'm going to get some vegetable oil preheating. We want to get this up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, ideal frying temperature. And as you can see, I have the temperature probe affixed and ready. Come on. Come on. I know this is to keep it fresh, but for gosh sakes. What the hell? Here we go. Come on. One, two, three. There we go. Gotcha. Oh, man. You can't imagine the pressure that you feel taking off a freshness seal in front of thousands of people. Okay. So, into a wide, shallow Dutch oven goes our oil. That's not enough oil, so I'm going to dump another one in here. <laughs> Only Steve 1989 MRE Info fans are going to get this. Nice. Okay. That's the, sorry, sorry I can't see it yet, but that's the brand name of the oil. It's called Nice. And I'd love to hear from any Steve 1989 MRE Info fans out there. And tell him to say hi to me because I, I've given him like three shouts, shout outs on my show. <laughs> I really like his show, man. I just want him to acknowledge me. I'm kidding. Um, he's, he's doing his thing down in Florida with the MREs. And it's just, I go to sleep every night watching, watching his show. Every night. It's my lullaby, that show. Okay. More vegetable oil. We want enough to, you know, so the donuts aren't like resting on the bottom. Um, the sour cream donuts, if I remember correctly, the sour cream donuts fall to the bottom and then pop up once they're, or maybe it's the other way around. I can't remember. One of these donuts falls down and then pops up when it's ready to flip. I think it actually might be the yeasted donuts. We're about to find out. So here we go. I'm going to turn on my temperature monitor here. I'll turn it over this way so you can see it. It's in Celsius. How'd that happen? There we go. Even though I, I agree, Celsius and metric is a better system, but it's not what I'm accustomed to. So, Woo. All right, there goes the burner. We're bringing this up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and whatever that is in Celsius. <coughs> okay. And over here we have our donuts that, you know, we're supposed to let these rise for about 45 minutes. We, for anybody who's just joining, um, we have lost patience with that. And we're just going to fry them and see what happens. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? They come out bad? Oh, no. If this was for like a bake sale for charity or something, then I'd be, I'd be very concerned. But I'm actually more curious about the science. Like, why do we need a second rise with donuts? You know, this is about to hit hot oil. Isn't that going to be enough to puff it up and make it full of life and vigor? Only, uh, we're, we're, we're about to find out, you know? And that's, that's more exciting in many ways than um, I'm going off the rails here. What's going on with you guys? We have a $10 super chat over here that I see. We have um, $10 from Joel Perez. Hey, Andrew, thank you. Th thanks to you and John Favreau, I make pasta aglio, pasta aglio olio. I almost said aglio e olio like a freaking, like, like an American chump. Uh, I make pasta aglio olio regu regularly, and I freaked out like you trying the pork when recreating Cubanos. Uh, Cubanos, sorry. You inspire me to cook more. Give Carl Casper my best. I will. Uh, John is the absolute man. He is the, he's my surrogate Hollywood uncle, I like to think of him. Um, he's the nicest, sweetest guy I've ever met in my entire life. And uh, he, 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 he really changed my life. Like uh, having him on the show was absolutely incredible, but meeting him was really something else. That guy has uh, experienced success and creative um, opportunity, the likes of which most people never will, and he's done some incredible, incredible things with it and has some incredible outlooks on it. He, um, a story I like to tell while we're waiting for the, 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 the oil to preheat. 
every time I wait for oil to preheat, I tell the John Favreau story, um, where he, uh, we, we, we were in between shoots and he was going through his Instagram and he saw that somebody tagged him in a photo of a, I can't remember what they're called, uh, a luge? Is the ice luge, is that what it's called? In the Winter Olympics when, um, when, when dudes are just like on that tiny little sled and they're just like, like a pencil just going down the ice chute. I don't know what I'm talking about. I think it's called the luge. Um, and they, you know, they go down at uh, many tens of miles an hour and they're going very, very fast. And um, <coughs> this guy had a, an Iron Man helmet on and tagged John in it, you know, this Olympian, this person who trained their entire lives. He decided to go down the ice chute wearing an Iron Man helmet with the likeness of, uh, of the Iron Man helmet from John's movie. And he saw that and he was so moved and he said, you know, you, you could potentially really become known for doing what you're doing, making this show. And this is the kind of thing I want you to remember is, mo is most important about what you do, the ways that your show and the things that you make connect people around the world and, and make people feel close to one another and, and share experiences w with one another they, m they might not have otherwise. And he just had the most beautiful outlook on, on the importance of his work. Um, you know, most, most people in the world, I'm sure if they made the first Iron, Iron Man, all they would say is, dude, look at that. The, I, I started the Marvel comic universe as you know it. <laughs> like the, Mar the Marvel cinematic universe as you know it. And, uh, and would, would just be a dick about it. But no, he, he saw this incredible sort of cultural uh, um, uh, commonality. And, uh, and uh, he, he, he re he was, he's a very inspiring person. Anyway, how are we doing on the oil over here? We're at um, 200 degrees. We're getting there. I'm very curious to see what these donuts are going to do. Let's see what they do. Hmm. This is very good bourbon. Uh, sorry, please tell Kevin it's very good bourbon. And thank you. Ah. It's very good bourbon, Kevin. Thank you. He says thank you. And <laughs> and uh, does anybody need a refill in there? All right. Me either, because I'm a big daddy glass over here. Uh, did I not sleep enough last night or something? I'm so tired. We ate like psychos last night. We had steak and chicken parmesan and all kinds of crap. It was really good. So I cannot say no, I guess. 225. We're getting this up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if there are any. Oh, some super chats we can take a look at here. We got Ali Al Sharifi. Ali Al Sharifi, $12. Thank you so much. Loving the videos. Quick and cheap for a broke college kid. Definitely going to uh, be doing a, a college special. Uh, for, for because when I was in college, I was making red sauce. I was making big, simple dishes that I could freeze and, you know, whatever. Uh, and, and it's very admirable that you want to cook in college. Plub, four ninety nine. thank you. Who's your waifu? I don't really know what uh, that uh, means. What's a waifu, Sawyer? Oh, many a sex thing? thing. An inspiration, you know, uh... Oh. Muse, um, usually female, could be depicted on a body pillow. Oh, well, my body pillow is, of course, uh, a, a life-size picture of Sawyer. Uh, so Sawyer is my waifu. Um, Mark Powell just gave $10 before we make it uh, weird. Um, can you switch over to me? We're still on the stone there. Um, that's all right. Healthy, a healthy outlook on your influence is always worth mentioning. Bravo and cheers from Western New York. Western New York, baby! Thank you for saying hi. Wow, a lot of Norwegians coming in. Or maybe it's just the same guy. Um, but I keep saying, seeing the, the currency NOK, which I assume is a Nor, the uh, Swedish or Nor, Norwegian currency of some kind. Um, 50 NOKs. Thanks. Thank you, Benjamin Erickson. Loved your new episode. Any chance for a Muppets episode? That could be Swedish Chef. Roast an entire Miss Piggy. That's so messed up, dude. Uh, but yeah, I probably want to do that sometime. Max Gomez gave four ninety nine to say daddy. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, daddy back at you. All right, we're going back over to the stove here. We're at 287, 288. Coming up in temperature rapidly. 
we want to drop these in right when it hits 350 and then lower but actually we'll keep the keep the the flame high because all that cold not cold but all that not 350 degree dough is going to cool off the oil a little bit and we want to maintain that 350 as, as best we can um but we also don't want to cook these too fast so we i mean that's the thing with with deep fryers, with professional deep fryers, it comes up to temperature and then it allows it to drop some because otherwise your food cooks too quickly. So I might actually drop the temperature down a little bit once we hit 350, let it go down naturally like two, 325 and then rise back up and we'll see what happens. These might come out as flat hot hockey pucks of nastiness. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to get a, a rack ready just in case they come out nice. So I've got a rack. I'm going to use a non-stick rack, actually. Pardon the noise in the absence. I've got a non-stick rack set over a rim baking sheet. This is where we're going to drain our donuts when they're done. Let's put that over here. Okay, we're at 320. Whoop. Nearly there. We're going to deep fry us these donuts. And then we're going to, hopefully by the time these are cooled off and filled with uh, jam or whatever, uh, um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, make some sour cream donuts as well. And if we can get both of these done tonight, I'm going to be so damned proud of us. I can't even, can't even explain. Um, but uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to. I have high hopes, though. I do. We're at 333. That's good luck, I think. This, this stove, man, is so hot. Like, I've, 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 so much of my arm and knuckle hair has been singed off by this freaking stove. Um, oh, we're at 340. Let's get ready here. It's pretty much done that time. 343. All right, I got some big... Ooh, yeah. They're feeling nice and light and puffy, so that gives me a little bit of hope. 348. I mean, I can drop them in now, but ceremoniously, I'm going to wait for, three, for 349 and 350. Here we go. In they go. They're floating immediately, which is interesting. Ow! Yeah, I got myself good there. That hurt. They're puffing up good. That's, that's a good thing. Oh, they're puffing up nice. I like that. I'm keeping the rest of these covered. Oh, look at that. They're puffing up great. That's awesome. Okay, let me get a spider going here. Where's my spider? Here's my spider. Oh, look at that. Dude, these are puffing up way better than the ones I did on the video. Maybe you don't need to let these rise. Or are they going to, like, explode in my face? We'll see. Oh, wow. These are... Wow. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm so... So enchanted by what's happening right now. This is Look quite nice. Look at them. Yeah, they're actually, you know what? Okay, maybe the problem is being revealed right now. I think they're too big. <laughs> I think that that's they're maybe the problem. Yeah, they're really puffed out, and I'm and I'm worried that they're not cooking enough in the middle. Which is why, I mean, granted, you want the white ring around the center of the donut. That is a desirable thing. So that's good to have. You're going to sear the tell. edges like a steak? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, but seriously, you, you do want... Oh, it's getting too hot. You do want the white rim around the edge. Think about a, a donut that you buy at the store. It's got a white rim around the edge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you said that so, like, victoriously, but... Well, you, you told me to think about a donut I was buying from a store, and I was like, mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Here I go, buying a donut. Yeah. Here I'm about to eat these donuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at me buying a donut. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Hollywood right. over here. <laughs> All right, I think these are done. Uh, I can't really tell. We'll see. Um, so I've got one batch, quote unquote, done here. I guess we'll, time will tell. Um, and I'm going to throw the rest in. But my, my, my fear is that they're over puffed and that letting them proof would make them not puff up so much but um i guess we'll see here uh that's one of the deformed ones or that, that's the, that's the not deformed but the, that's the one that i remember reforming out of uh the scraps that's wow, really puffing up and um we're just gonna let these go i guess here we go Woo! 
Okay. All right, and I just uh, I just put the spider I just put the spider right on the plastic wrap, so it just got covered in melted plastic. So we need a we need a we need a different uh, we need an alternate option here. Um, let's use a slotted spoon. How about that? That seems like a good idea. All right, slotted spoon away. Here we go. Let's give these a little flip. Okay, I'm liking the look of these. These are looking good. I don't like the way that that one's spitting up oil like that. That scares me. There we go. Oh! Oh my gosh. Did anybody see that? That just flipped over on its own. It's got a mind of its damn own. Oh my god. Okay. Come on. Oh no. All right. Some of these are... Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Okay. That's a real roly-poly right there. Oh, damn it, Sawyer. <laughs> damn it. Damn you for saying that about my donuts. Well, we pullies are... That donut shops at H. Dumpty's. What the hell? Oh, huh? Okay, I'm killing the heat because it's too hot anyway. Um, all right. Well, these look... I'm feeling positively about these. They look pretty solid. They look way more puffed up than the ones we made for the video, which is, I think, a good thing. The ones that we made for the video were a little bit collapsed, which were which was kind of uncool. Um, this first batch looks freaking perfect. Here we go. Let's drain these off here. I'm feeling pretty good about these. Let's see what happens, though. <laughs> Um, what I am going to do is get a bowl of sugar ready because I want to coat these down in regular old granulated sugar because uh, that is what I like on, and most of the world likes on the outside of a, a, uh, a raspberry jam stuffed donut, a uh, raspberry jelly donut rather. Um, and also we're going to have to do a little bit of improvisation as far as stuffing these guys because um, I don't have any pastry bags so we're going to have to use a Ziploc bag like our, our, our ancestors did um, but let's go ahead and sugar these guys we want to do it while they're still warm so the sugar adheres so I'm just gonna pour a bunch of sugar into this here bowl I'm going to grab these if they're not too hot to touch and just sort of do that and just coat them down. These feel right. I got to say, they feel perfectly like donuts. <laughs> you know, that donut feel. You guys know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's still a hot one. Let's get this one. There we go. There we go. These are looking right. I'm feeling very optimistic about these. Maybe you don't need that second rise. They definitely puffed up like too much a bit. Definitely. But they don't feel super dense or anything, which is giving me lots and lots of hope. So. <clears throat> what did you guys think of uh, the, the, uh, the Han Solo movie? I thought it was not so great. But not bad either. It was still, I still had fun at the movies, you know. You know, really what going to the movies is about. But it was pretty trite. I don't know where that came from in my mind. Oh, because I said I have a new hope, and that made me think of Star Wars. Okay. These are getting nice and sugared up. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> you know, rolling them around in sugar. It's exactly what we're after. Perfect. Uh, there we go. Yeah, these feel right. These feel very good, actually. Like, the, they don't feel dense or heavy. They feel very light. I think these are going to be just right. Better than the, uh, than the, than the, the ones that we made for the actual show, which took a few tries. And these ones, I thought, were going very poorly. <laughs> the, I thought the, the dough was too wet. So you really got to dip them as, as soon as they come out of the oil soon as you can handle them with your with your fingers because they need the oil there to really adhere the sugar otherwise it doesn't really stick as well as you'd like it to these are still just sticking just fine but these foot ones i just took out are really really doing the job 
really coming out right. Okay, so now we're just gonna let these cool off a little bit because we can't fill them with jam while they're still hot. So we're gonna let them cool off for maybe 15 minutes. And uh, let's check in on our sour cream donuts. Maybe it's firmed up enough where we can, how long do you think it's been? When did those go in? Like 7.30, 7.15? So it's been, maybe it's been about an hour, and I wonder if uh, because of the flattened kind of form factor that we gave those donuts, I wonder if maybe they'll be okay. Um, only one way to find out, folks. Here we go. First, let's get all this crap off of here. I'll use a bench scraper. Am I missing any super chats or any? Oh, we got a $20 super chat. What do we got here? Michael Shane, $20, thank you so much. Your channel, like your pens, are ripping hot. Thanks, man. You and Chef John inspired me to cook for my wife and friends. Cheers. That's lovely to hear. I love hearing that, you, that you're cooking for your wife and friends. That's so important to, you know, not only cook for yourself because it's healthy and because it's a good way to spend your time and money, but also to cook for your friends and family because, uh, and, and for your wife because it, just, it just shows them you care. It's a nice way to show people that you care. Um, so... Let's, uh, let's take a look at this. I don't think it's going to be ready, but let, you know, boy can dream. It's not. It's not. I can already feel that it's not ready. I want to eat that chicken parmesan just with my hands so bad. If you guys weren't watching, and if I was a little stoned, I would eat that like a beast right now. But I have shame, so I won't. Um, but hey, at the very least, I think we have some successful, uh, we're going to have some successful raspberry stuff done. Speaking of which... I was telling you we have to improvise because I don't have any pastry bags. So, oh, the my, my, my Ziploc bags are still in my suitcase from when I packed them for the, for the camping trip. So pardon me while I run and grab them. Here we go. I need the big ones. Okay. Oh, maybe I don't actually. Hmm. See, this has, a, this has what, what Steve1989 MRE Info would refer to as a gusset on the bottom. It's actually not very conducive to turning it into an impromptu pastry bag. So I actually don't, I don't think it's going to work. I think we have to go with a smaller one, which I have over here, so I don't need to go off camera again. All right. These ones, I know, don't have a gusset in them. So if you ever find yourself without a pastry bag, you can make one, um, uh, sort of uh, an improvised one. I'm going to still try to do my... My drinking glass trick, which is to sort of go like this and just use that to make it easier to just dump the, um, the raspberry jam in there. Let me grab the jam. Where's the jam? I just bought it. There it is. Grab the jam. And let's load it up. And this is just your run-of-the-mill seedless raspberry jam. Just like grandma used to make or buy because it's Smuckers and for some reason that makes me think of old people even though I love Smuckers and I'm, I'm young as hell. I'm kidding, I'm like 30, I'm like 31 now, I'm getting old. That's why I love Smuckers so much. I'm going off the rails here. <laughs> I'm hungry. Um, Smuckers is definitely an old people thing. Come on, dude. They might sponsor us one day. Let's chill. Hey, what's wrong with old people? We're old. Everything's wrong. Oh, God. I'm not thinking clearly, dude. I, 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 didn't, I didn't put the tip on this. You need to put a tip on this to get it into oh, the... Oh, I thought you were going to, like, corner. cut off a corner at the end. I, I was, which is something you could do to, to frost with, but uh, I, I, I need, a, I need a, a metal tip in there so I can insert it into the donut. You can put the tip in the other side. No, and I then can't. Sque then squeeze I'll show you it over. Why. No, I'll show you why I can't do that. Show me. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> squeeze it really sorry, hard. I'm, I'm sorry you have to hear this 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 dispute <laughs> between Sawyer and I. Um, so, okay. Uh, what I can do is use that to get the jam into the other bag. It's a little wasteful, but okay. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna grab some scissors. So if you ever find yourself without a pastry bag, happens to me all the time, you know, like right now, um, this uh, works. So you can snip an edge off a uh, corner off of uh, your 
zip top bag. And then simply, see this particular, uh, <clears throat> this particular tip system has a little plastic bit that goes underneath and then this goes on top. And then you use a, a sort of um, threaded screw here to mate the two like so. And then that creates a waterproof seal between the two so that way nothing gets out. So just so we don't waste this jelly, well, we, even though we're going to waste the bag, which is a shame, we can snip this off and then we can just, just, just like that, you know, you guys watching The Good Place? I don't know why I'm reminding myself of like, oh, why can't I remember his name right now? Chidi? No, no, the, the kid from Florida. What's his name? Oh, what's that kid's name? I can't what's believe I forgot. Us? We've watched all of that show. What's going on? Yeah, recently. Um, well, I'll see it in the comments. His name is, is, is Jason Mendoza. There it is. Nice. Jason Mendoza. Bortles. Der big lover of Derek Bortles? Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles. I love sports. Okay. So, we got a pastry bag here that's ready to stuff some donuts. See, I'm just going to... Perfect. I'm going to keep that in there for mess-free storage. That should be enough to fill our donuts. I'm clean my I'm clean the sticky off my hands here. Oh great, I got a lot of dishes here to clean up. <laughs> okay. And uh, we're just waiting for those to cool off. I want to give them like five more minutes uh, before we fill them. And then maybe we'll skip, skip sour cream dumps because those are a solid hour away from being able to roll out and we can't just stand here and chat we'll do them. Hour. We'll do them later, uh, you know, private style. Yeah, private style, exactly. That's the only way I do anything. Hmm. Private style. Private style. Um, okay, Michael Shane, thank you for chilling. Our viewership went back up. It must be because we were deep frying. Oops. It smells so good. Go away. All right, so let me uh, give these guys a little feel here. Let's see how we're doing. Might as well have them in frame while we're waiting for them to cool off. I think they're almost there. Still very warm. We don't want them too warm because they're just, you know, just going to melt the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, jelly filling, and uh, that's not ideal. Might just fill one just for demonstration's sake because, you know, otherwise we're just going to be standing here. But in the meantime, let's answer a couple questions. Let's give them five more minutes, huh? That sounds good. What's, what's going on with you guys? Tell me what's up. Blood and chocolate dessert from Hannibal. I haven't, if that's from season three, I haven't watched it yet, which I'm, sorry, I'm very embarrassed to admit. Sorry. Hey, Carlos Puentes made it to a basic, Basics Live show. You never make these. Welcome. Uh, I see. I see. You guys can't see it, but a guy drew a, a uh, emoticon penis going into a, a donut. That's inappropriate. Sh um, shall I allow it so they can see it? Yeah, please. Yeah, they should see it. Yeah, right, you guys at, should see it's this. At, it's at 8.32. <clears throat> Check out 8.32. Okay. Um, the Brain Gremlin, an intellectual, gave five pounds. Hey, Babs, can we have a recap of your ink? Also, I'd love to see you roast a whole damn pig's Lord of a whole damn pig Lord of the Flies style. That's a weird reference for a whole pig, but <laughs> I'm into that one. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Wait, but there wasn't a pig. There was this character named Piggy. Oh, that's messed up. I think they um, I think they kill that kid. Yeah. Yeah, they do. They throw him off a cliff. I remember his brains came out. That was a weird book to read when I was young. Um, five pounds. Thank you so much, Brain Gremlin. I'll give you a quick rundown of the tattoos. This is uh, the, the name of my fantasy bakery, Born and Bread. <laughs> this is the original Kodak logo from 1911, Eastman Kodak Company. Uh, this is a lens refraction diagram, the way light enters and is flipped up, upside down by a lens. This is a tattoo, a big tattoo of cilantro growing out of my armpit. 
This is the pasta twirled on the um, carving fork from Chef. Uh, the carving fork, which, hey, I've never done this before. Here's the carving fork from the movie Chef, right here. John, John Favreau gave it to me uh, uh, when, I, when, I was, when we were shooting together, and uh, this is it. This is the one from the movie. I've used it several times to make, to make pasta and serve it up. Um, so there that is. Um, and uh, then there's the Seattle skyline for Fraser right here. And this is unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks when you're here at your family. Uh, and then I got a couple others that you can't see. Um, and we got some other super chats here while we're waiting. Vana Gonzalez, $5. Thank you so much. Your voice is enticing. I can listen to you all day. Will you make something or everything from It's Complicated or a Lavender Earl Grey ice cream? Well, Vana, thank you so much. I'm glad that you like my voice, and I'll stop doing this now. But uh, that Lavender Earl Grey ice cream sounds really good. I'm going to try that. Um, I haven't seen It's Complicated, so I'm going to have to watch that and uh, see what there is to make from that. Um, thank you very much for your super chat. Scrambled Egg 81 says, Mr. Babby, I miss the bourbon of the evening. If you don't mind repeating yourself. Well, this bourbon was a gift uh, from my dear, sweet manager, Kevin Grush, and it is Noah's Mill uh, Kentucky bourbon, and I love it. Uh, it's really, really fabulous. This batch of bourbon was aged in the wooden barrels until fully mature, bottled by hand at 57.15% alcohol by volume. Um, Noah's Mill Bourbon is an extraordinary character of smoothness not found among younger whiskeys. Its superior taste... Okay, I'm going to start reading like a normal person. Its superior taste and flavor characteristics are made possible only from using the very finest quality ingredients at the outset, along with years and patience necessary for nature to mellow everything to perfection. We bottled this bourbon at strength, the best accommodates its age. Uh, I can't read it, apparently. Um, and we're sure you'll enjoy it like no other bourbon. It's very, very good. Um, I'm only unable to read because I'm very, very tired. Um, and very, very hungry. I'm going to go ahead and just try filling one of these and see what happens. Can't be that bad. I feel pretty cooled off. Oh, I have to make a, gotta make a hole first. Grab a paring knife here. Where's my paring knife? Hmm. Okay, I'll make a hole with something else. How about, nope, that's not gonna work. Um, how about you? I got a little spoon here. T tiny whisk, neat, tiny spoon. And I'm just gonna, oh, oh, okay, that's not very sharp. That's a bad idea, but still made a hole. Bore a little hole in there. Grab my quote-unquote pastry bag, shove the tip in, and squeeze. And I'm just going to try and get a lot in there without it actually bursting the dang thing open. Well, look at that. We filled one. We got it. Let's do another one, shall we? I need something sharper. How about, ooh, here we go. Let's use the thermopen. Now we can actually see what's the temperature inside the donut. 107 degrees. That seems perfect. That cooled off, cooled off real quick. I'm just boring open a hole. Probably want to do this as late as possible. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes only. Let these cool completely because uh, you might ruin the texture of the donut if you fill it too quickly, or too early rather. Okay, get some more. There we go. And uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to rip one of these in half just so we can see, you know, what does the interior look like. This is probably the worst one. It's the flattest one. So let's, uh, let's see what kind of uh, crumb we ended up with in the center here. That looks great. That looks perfect. Nothing undercooked, nothing too dense. I'm gonna try a bite. Hmm. It's perfect. Wow. I might revise the recipe on the website to exclude any kind of second proof because these really came out perfectly. Wow. Okay. Lesson learned. Let's really get some more jam in there. There we go. Really fill her up. Let's do one more. Let's call it a day. <laughs> Time is it? 8.38. Yeah, we've been going for almost three hours now. 
We can call it after this. Let's get this jam in there. Really fill this guy up. Ram. There we go. All right. Look at that. That's exactly what I want to see when I, when I get a donut. All right. Let's see what happens when I bite into one of these. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. That is a damned fine donut. It's really well filled. It's, it's light. It's airy. All right, boys, you got to get in here and have one of these. Oh, hell yeah. Here we come. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mm. Which one? This fill here? Yeah. Mm. That's good. Mm. Really good. It's better than last time. I hate to say it. They're well filled too. Yeah, no, I mean, these really kick the shit out of the ones that we made for the show. Like the ones oh for the gosh. show. Mm. So, so forget the second rise. I'm taking that off the website because uh, these are better without the second rise. They really are. Mm. Perfect doughiness. Yeah, they're nice and chewy. Yeah. That's the best part about a yeasted donut is you get a little bit of that, like, you know, bready kind of chew to it. Still, they're still warm, but not hot. Yeah. All right. Dinner. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because I told myself I was going to have one bite and then we would order dinner. But I seem to still be eating it. Yeah. It's really good. Mmm. Well, fuck it, I guess. Just have that. Mmm. <laughs> All right. Mm. Close the thing down. Yeah, let me say goodbye quick and then we'll shut it down. All right, All right folks. <clears throat> I'm going to say a quick goodbye. And then we're going to shut this thing down. Because those sour cream donuts ain't even, uh, even close to ready yet. They need a, another solid hour in there. And frankly, I can't even stand that much longer. I'm tired. And I need to eat some food that isn't donuts. Uh, even though I just ate a whole donut. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming out and hanging out. And um, thank you for, uh, for uh, 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 cooking along if you cooked along or just watching. Thank you so much to my new members, to any super chatters. Really appreciate all of your extremely generous contributions to the show. I can't thank you enough. Um, thank you for, you know, cooking. Thank you. I, I heard so many people say that, you know, they're starting to cook for their family or their friends or their spouse. And I can't tell you how much that warms my heart. Like, keep cooking for your, the people that you care about, people that you don't even know yet. Cook, just cook. For, for, show, show people, you know, it's a beautiful way to show people how much you care about them and, and, what, and what's, uh, what they mean to you. And, um, and I'm very happy that some of you guys are giving it a try. Try these, you know. Uh, obviously, they're great from Duncan or from, from uh, Tim Hortons, but... Um, there's a, there's definitely a sense of accomplishment for making them yourself and uh, having them fresh, warm, full of, you know, jelly melting out of them is really something else. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. And um, I see that there's one more super chat. Hang on. There's one more super chat that I haven't addressed. Callan, yo, what's up? They look delicious. Hope to make some soon. I hope you make some soon too, buddy. Thank you to Kevin for bringing uh, some much, much needed whiskey in the situation. And uh, thank you for Sawyer, as always, for doing such an amazing job in the other room, administrating, making things happen. Uh, and uh, good night from all of us. Keep, uh, keep binging. Keep it, I'm sorry, what was the tagline? Keep it basics. Keep, keep it basic. Bye, guys. <laughs>